Oh, oh, I see that. I, see. I see the shade. Wait, say that again? Oh, in character tools. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, I just have leather workers, I believe. I was looking to pick up hunting, t uh, the scavenging tools or whatever. For har harvesting, harvesting tools, that's what they're called. Oh, it's going to be that kind of game. It was there for like a half second. We just walk into the forest and this troll just has wrestling gear on. Yeah, I saw I saw that part. <laughs> Your was uh the lizard folk, right? Nice.
Uh, give me a quick second. I haven't turned my computer off in three days because I finally got my Streamlab settings to work right, and I'm afraid because it feels like every time, every time I start my computer up again, Streamlabs is like, wouldn't it be cool if I ran another update and changed things? So I know that's just like paranoia and uh, superstition, but I don't know. It's running pretty smooth today, knock on wood. So we'll see how it goes. Mm. All right, I'm good. And the first thing, okay, then I'll host you. The first thing we've got to do this morning is set your guys' uh, heights because now Foundry tracks that ship. Um, and if you are tall enough, you can actually see over certain walls and even um, climb over those walls, uh -oh. uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Foundry, all right, program. I think I think it's going to be pretty big someday. I think uh, I think maybe some people are going to start using it. I don't know. I'm really enjoying it compared to Roll Twenty. Yeah, it's wild that like latest polls I've seen or whatever, there's still I think like eighty percent of people are still on Roll Twenty. It, this uh, program's yeah, a lot cool. less user friendly, I would say. It took me a lot longer to adapt to it, but I'm yeah. enjoying it more now that I understand it. Yeah, the learning curve from what I've found on Foundry is a lot higher, but once you start getting going, it's it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, it, it's well, got not a, only that, I it's hard. Know. It's I... hard to teach. Is the thing that's really frustrating. Like. I get asked weekly why I haven't made a Foundry tutorial series. And I'm like, I did when I first started using it, and it was outdated within two weeks. Well, I think that's the main problem is because they're they haven't come out to like official release yet. It still keeps going yeah. through like version updates. So like once maybe it gets to its final core update, that would make sense. But yeah, there's like a new version every like of a month or something. Yeah, yeah. the menus changed today. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. It's it's oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so we're using Flex I didn't know UI. If that was a mod or... No, it's a mod. It's a mod. It's Flex UI. Um, it doesn't really change anything, yeah. but it just looks a bit more immersive and fun. So that's totally. the main reason we switched to that. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, yeah. So many different mods. It's hard to you know. Oh yeah. Whenever I try to show someone something, I have to go to my uh my basic bitch world essentially. That's just you know no mods, no nothing, and then you know I'm like, hey, so this is how you do this, blah blah blah. But yeah, it's really hard to be like, oh, I don't know why this isn't working for you. Maybe it's one of the 200 mods you have installed. Um, yeah, but there was this the guy named yeah. Cobble DM, and he got pretty YouTube famous for his uh, Foundry videos. And then when they updated to nine, he basically was like, yeah, I pretty much just have to take all these videos offline because like they don't work anymore. Like all these tutorials don't work anymore. None of these mod tutorials are relevant anymore. Like all the work he had done for like a year when Foundry 9 came out, it was, like, useless. Like, my Roll20 tutorials are outdated, and I think they're, like, two years old as of, like, today, something like that. But they're still usable enough to, to use the, you know, to learn the basics of the program. But Foundry, two weeks, two weeks in my series, uh, my, my Foundry series was uh, uh, unusable. So I was just like, I ain't, I ain't making tutorials for Foundry. So, but I guess I am because the patrons voted that I would make a Foundry tutorial. So, um, but it's more like my current best practices and less of a formal. Yeah, like basic tutorial. setup yeah, yeah. stuff that makes a lot more mm -hmm. sense. All right, so let me walk you through um, height yeah. real quick so we can get that set up. Barnabas, how tall are you? I am two foot seven. Two foot seven? Oh, man. Very small. Uh, should we round up or down? All right, I'll be three feet. All right. Three feet is what you put on your dating profile. <laughs> All right, guy, how, t how tall are you? The guy is not a liar, but he has lied about only one thing. He is 5'11 and 3 fourths. Oh, <laughs> that's that's me IRL. No shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never hit but, the six foot mark. Damn. But he, but he always tells people he's six feet. Okay. I'll say that you stand on your tippy toes to look over walls. That's fine. That's right. That's Where's fine. left? Jert. I got a feeling Jert like six foot six. I ain't going to lie. How tall is Jert? Uh, I have him between 6'2 and 6'4 in his background. I haven't. Okay, it. okay. So we'll just put you at 6 because I don't think I could do um, decimals or whatever. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, he's, not, he's not that big, but he, he's pretty tall. Layla. I have her as 5'8. She's 5'8. Pretty, pretty tall lady. You, you want to round up or down? Uh, I don't care. Either one. Okay. I mean, it's beneficial to be as tall as possible. Well, so. then up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. She got uh, some 
inches on those boots. Yeah, uh -huh. it goes Just to the really tall. goes to the Elsa, the only hot topic in Elsa Vale, and you have like a VIP account and get them four inch uh, platform uh, leather boots. All right, Orion. How tall are you? Uh, I think I said I was one inch over three, so just put me at All three. Right. Three, all right. And Thanlin? Five, ten. Okay, so tippy toes to six. All right, got it. Okay. So I don't think the tokens that are on the board um, have it, so I'm going to delete those. I'll drag out a freshie set for you. It's dark. Uh, oh, there is this amazing mod that allows you to drag an entire folder onto the field, and it will take every uh, actor in that folder and put them on the field all at once. It's a good mod. What's I don't this, know the uh... name of it. It's probably called, like, Folder Drag Mod. I don't know. Like, I like it when they name the mod exactly what the mod does. <laughs> <laughs> I would name every... If I was in charge of naming things, it'd be a very boring world, but everything would make sense, so... I think it's what we want for in mods. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> okay. I, I so. Just, oh, uh, oh no no no! You, go for it. I was gonna say I just found the uh, the journal notes tab where you get a little piece of art for Drillin's fairy. It's nice for ambiance if no one's found it yet. Oh yeah, I think that should. Let me enable. Um. Well, we have Discord for taking notes. Like Foundry's pretty good about having like areas for you guys to take notes. Would you prefer just keeping track in Foundry, or would you prefer when I hand, give you guys a handout, I enable the ability to write notes, and then you can kind of come back to it? Or are you just keeping notes privately? Are you doing a Google Doc? Well, what's your, I'm what's your setup? Google Doc. Okay. Yeah, because when I'm a player, I don't know I'm if doing Google Doc. That. When I'm a player and I'm taking, uh, I'm, I'm trying to like do a good job. Um, I'll have like a Google Doc that I'll share with the rest of the group and we'll all like kind of maintain our notes or whatever together. That's a really um, good idea. Yeah, do that. Isn't that a great Isn't idea? A yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a chamomile move. Um, and then also that'll link to like a spreadsheet, which will have the bag of holding contents. Oh, and, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do that with my other groups idea. as well, but I don't feel being a dude now. Take yeah, chamomile is very like type A. So when I play as chamomile, it's generally very type a like she fucking maps dungeons she keeps track of npcs middle names like all that it's exhausting it's exhausting. oh god <laughs> yeah but i'm keeping me as an actual person i'm probably more of a hellebore than a uh than a chamomile unfortunately so cool uh, that you can turn it on for the the role yeah yeah, yeah i i feel like a thousand people just living inside my head it's fantastic um all right so this week's um, factspiration question um, is a, it's a pretty deep ass question for some low level character to answer but you know what uh, let's do it what does your character hope for the afterlife hmm. oh, geez. yeah that's deep that's some deep ass question so um, only one of you will answer and you will receive a uh, bardic inspiration die that lasts the entire session um, don't worry, it's labeled Faxpiration, so you can still receive Bardic Inspiration from uh, Guy um, if he's one of those bards that actually hands out uh, Inspiration. Um, yeah. uh, I'll, uh... <laughs> That's a telling response. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Damn. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take it if nobody else does. All okay, York. now, you're, now you'll, you can ruminate on this for a couple of minutes because somebody does have the opportunity to sum up what happened last time. This is going to be a pretty easy one, I think, because it was a pretty short session since most of it was session zero. Uh, if you sum up what happened last time, you get a point of DM inspiration. Oh I'll take and the reason that I like players to do this is as a DM, this helps me uh, understand like what's getting through to the players and what's not getting through to the players. Um, and also it's just a bit more interesting, especially if you tell it like through your character's uh, point of view, but as like an omniscient narrator. So it's a good role playing challenge too. Um, we used to do from your character's point of view and then a certain uh, RTK uh, got uh, kind of schmug about it, and he uh, would only literally talk about the things that his character was conscious for, because um, his character had a bad habit of getting knocked at zero all the time. Um, so it, it's a third-person uh, omniscient, like, you know everything that happened last session, but it's still in character. 
Just it's imagine okay. guys slandering, like, talking about the story to, like, the whole tavern, and you have to, like, clarify to somebody, like... In, uh, in Witchlight Isekai, we basically pretend it's, like, uh, the office, and, like, uh, the characters are being pulled aside by the camera crew, and then being asked, like, how they feel about what's happening in the, in the game, uh, or the adventure so far. But, That's fun. how are, yeah, how are oh, we going to... Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so does anybody want to step up and volunteer to do, I believe this is the first session recap for inspiration of the campaign. I, heard I mean, oh, sure, sure, I, I get it. Okay. All right. So we kind of had two sessions last session. The first of our two sessions was Crash destroying his voice box for two hours straight, trying to tell us the entirety of all the rules and regulations that us signing in blood our lives away. <laughs> The second half of the session was us uh, starting by uh, bumblefucking our way through, figuring out how we know each other at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not very well. Uh, not we wrong. met. Yeah, we joined. We our scene kind of joined together at a tavern, and we kind of were like in this you know rolling place filled with all these weird little you know people that just popped out and just kind of did some character introductions and meeting. And through our 100% altruistic uh, means, we decided to take on a task of helping that local tavern keeper with a bit of a problem that had kind of affected his family and his daughter of a troll in, in the town. Uh, he offered us up a pretty fat sum of money, but since we were so, so generous and, and earnest, he offered up even more of his life savings digging deep into that piggy bank. Uh, in return, we decided, well, we should probably do some research about the trolls, uh, dug deep into our memories, figured out what we individually knew, and then decided to kind of go about the town, had a conversation with the guard, figuring out why they haven't handled it, um, kind of what they know about the troll, which is, I guess, pretty understandable, since it probably would tear them limb from limb, and they're more or less in the mindset of, yeah, we were just kind of saving up, hoping someone else would take care of it. Uh, with that kind of information under the way, I believe it was Guy's contact who ran a shop that we're currently at uh, that we have made our way into that sells like oddities and knickknacks and maybe a little bit of magical stuff. And our session had ended just as they were about to ask us for a favor. Was that everything? I think Good. so. That was pretty thorough. Yeah, um, we had a few yeah. plot hooks that we uh, were given, like a hydra in the fens, um, some strange pretty things dope. happening on a farm called Daisy Meadows, and a graveyard with some like giant rodent tracks. These and are all... dancing skeletons. Apparently. Yes. Yes. And we totally forgot. Well, guys, thinking about the party name, but. Uh, he's, he's already, already come up there. He's already come up with three other party names, so he's like well versed. We're, uh, we're on our way. We're on our way. Yeah. Also, canonically, Thanlin is banging the head of the guard. That yeah, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah that, that, that is worth not skipping you know, over. If, there was if, some. That'll come yeah, up later. Top yeah, tier yeah. teenage romance RP. Mm -hmm. If guys said it, <laughs> it's true. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Sure. laughs> So, um, yeah, go ahead and take your point of deem inspiration. And, uh, let's see. Does somebody want to answer the question of, um, sure, sure. Yeah, what does your character hope for the afterlife? Uh, Guy? Guy has no expectations of the afterlife other than hoping, no matter where he is or what he ends up being in the end, just being inspiration for thousands of children and bards to come. All right. Very nice. But secretly, if he can get into some sweet, sweet fake court in like forever, just like, you know, sing there, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, in my other games, we do allow people to ask NPCs the same question. I don't know if you know enough NPCs to ask them uh, any questions yet. Um, 
<laughs> Ask the troll because he's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> we know Jarrett. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you do. You know Jarrett. You know um, Kellen. Um, I Kellen guess you know. I think I think Kellen. Guy would have asked Kellen this way too early. So. Okay. Okay. So Kellen, um, what does he hope for in the afterlife? Um. Let's see. Kellen is a uh, a stalwart um, and devout worshiper of Vandra. The, uh, the goddess of uh, travels and uh, adventure and all that jazz and uh, would probably um, would probably hope that maybe in the afterlife he could um, still run a tavern um, but you know like a tavern in the in those more adventurous realms of, uh, of Elysium and all that jazz um, and continue uh, to sort of support uh, adventurers, but at a uh, a much more epic tier of uh, of doing so, um, while also maybe secretly going on some some badass afterlife adventures himself, um, kind of has kind of kind of has a, a long game that it would have been great to stay in the adventuring business a bit longer, hit them high levels, uh, you know, steal from the gods themselves, that kind of thing. Instead, he. Uh, he settled down and opened a tavern, which is always the safe move um, when you get to a certain level. So, uh, all right, cool. Uh, last bookkeeping things. Um, this giant die right here is a creature that you guys have control over and it apparently is bleeding all over the map. Um, this, The hit points of this creature are how many fanspirations you guys have. So when we are tracking fanspiration, we'll just use this from now on to track fanspiration. Um, that way you guys, uh, you guys should all have access to this creature, um, at all times. Uh, you can always go back to this map anytime you want. Um, it should be enabled for, uh, player access. Um, that said, Drellin's Fairy map is also available for player access, so you should be able to just pick which map you're on, uh, by just navigating to the, uh, the map of your choice. Um, there should be little circles for everybody's, um, names or whatever. And that'll show you that you see somebody has gone over to Drellin's Fairy map right now. I don't know if you guys can see little circles or not to show which maps they're on. Um, the other thing is there's this new mod for tracking resources. Um, not all the players like it, but me as a DM, I love it. So unfortunately, it's going to stick around. Um, basically, when you're on a scene and you have access to a miniature, uh, you should be able to see it down at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you double click on your picture at the bottom of the screen, it will open the character sheet for you automatically. So it's another shortcut to your character sheet. And also it will list some values above your sheet or ab above your icon. So it's armor class, perception, insight, investigation, stealth, and um, hit current hit points. So it's very useful for me because I can kind of look down and see all of those passive values 24 seven while I'm running a game uh, before I had to toggle a menu on and off every time I wanted to see it. Um, but now it's just always there. And if I need to go to one of your character sheets, I can just click on it and go there uh, very quickly. So it's a very, very good uh, resource for me. It has a shitload of other features that I didn't even bother to enable. Um, but if you are a DM who really likes to have a lot of control over your game, um, this is a really good mod. Um, because like, the actual features are stuff like turning on and off movement for characters, um, uh, specific characters, and um, requesting roles, requesting contested roles. Um, all that stuff is like built into this mod. It's crazy. This this guy, Monk, he basically puts like five or six mods into every mod he makes. So it's pretty it's neat. Monk's little details, right? I think I've heard of it. Uh, this is Monk's uh, player icons, I think. Um, uh, I'll search. See. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Monk's Token Bar is the name of this one. Uh, and it does uh, many things. It does many things. All right. Let me take you guys back to the Drawlands Ferry map. And we will continue uh, where we left off last week. Put right. that bot on the list. Let's change out the music, yeah? He has a really amazing tile mod that I used to make a working xylophone um, in Foundry. So he does some pretty good shit. I saw All the right. xylophone battle. That was very funny. Yeah. 
Um, unfortunately, the mod did have some issues with my other, uh, uh, some of my other mods, so I had to get rid of it after the Xylophone battle was over. But it was useful for what it did. Alrighty. Um, yeah, where we left off, uh, Jarrett uh, Nurth was uh, speaking with you guys. And uh, what she she kind of wanted to know what you guys were going to be named for marketing purposes. Phelan will look over to Guy and just raise an eyebrow. The captains. No, no. The captains. What is it? Kind of sits there for a moment. Kind of clicking, clicking his tongue. Hmm. We have a cattle select. Probably the most prominent thing. It's very marketable. Uh, would you mind, the um, mouse kin warrior? It Orion. Is... Orion, that's right. Uh, do you mind, Orion, the name of the creature again? His name is Claude. Are you trying to make money off of him? <laughs> no, I would never do that. <laughs> I've never collected more coin than I need in my life. Just just staring at you. Is this is this a hero huddle? Gaining the, you know, like where you yeah. guys have kind of like moved away from the NPC and you've stuck your heads together? Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that one's very marketable. And everyone, all of us will see it. And anyone that meets us will see the big, big, big not troll lion. So I, I think we sh we could work with that. If you, if you want my expertise, I have three other parties. They've all done fantastic. I'm gonna insight that one. Wait, didn't we insight yeah. last session? Oh, yeah. We found out they all left. Oh, and I trust him implicitly. Like he right. might, yeah, have yeah. He That's might totally. have poisoned his previous parties. <laughs> it's also yeah, true. Nuts. <laughs> so you're calling us the not troll lions? Mmm, that's actually really good, because it's like knotted, like it's maybe, in the knot. Maybe something like claws, because Claude. Oh, the captain's claws. There we go. That's pretty good. I like alliteration. Mm, I was thinking of a lot. different name, but we might get copyrighted, so never mind. Mm, the What's killer copyright? claws. <laughs> I a don't too know. Hard. I mean, this is your chance to throw them out. We even got like a poll, a polling tool, so... I mean, of course, I've got the one I've been sitting on for a while, which is Rest to Lois Memory, the last bastion of the Alcivale. Doesn't but I feel exactly like off the tongue. It doesn't, and I feel as though we're a little bit um, small fry at the moment for that. We need something short and memorable. I like Captain's Claws. Yeah, I can work with that. I'm not opposed. I like alliteration, says Barnabas Benoit. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. Insert party name here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like you're going to be stuck with it forever. So, I mean... Yes, I'm a little bit caught up on the captain bit. It feels like we're going to be trapped with the guard for the rest of eternity. And they'll be like, oh, who's the captain? And of course you're going to say me once we leave... <laughs> the uh, Drelin's Ferry, but I'm not sure if you want that, you know. Yeah, sure. Cla Claude sort of does like a Disney animal reaction to that where he kind of like uh, curls up his snoot and like pulls his head back like, say what? Uh, and you could kind of tell uh, Orion that he's thinking he thought he was going to be the captain because it's Captain Claus. Uh, yeah, Jerry so... was going to point his thumb at him and be like, uh, what about Claude? Oh, well, everyone knows that not trolls are uh have leadership issues big egos you know oh wow uh he all lets right. out a low rumble in his uh in his throat box yeah ryan just walks over and just kind of pats his belly he's like don't worry buddy oh he's purring uh-huh that's what he's doing <laughs> <laughs> anyways i i think there's something we can come over that starts with <laughs> Whether that be something that starts with K or C in the common tongue, and then claws, because claws here is a very, very marketable, very, very marketable. 
Uh, Orion will look at Jarrett and kind of... Is this... Does this have to be permanent? Or can we just continue workshopping? Oh, oh she... Uh, she says, um, no, 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 no. You don't need to, um, you really don't even need to have a name today. It's just something that, you know, if we were going to be signing things and I was going to be providing you with provisions and, and such, it would, it would make a lot more sense on paper, um, rather than have to refer to each of you, uh, what is there, seven of you, um, you know, over and over and over again. If I could just, I guess we'll just call you the party in the, uh, in the documents I have written up. Uh, yes, speaking of provisions and sponsorship, a little hand pokes up over the counter because mm -hmm. I'm not tall enough to reach over it. And I just put a piece of paper down on the desk in front of her. Uh, these are things that I consume that I'm going to be wanting if you're going to be catering to adventurers. I'm just going to uh, post. You, you, there should be some stools around the shop. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, we do cater to our halfling clientele. I'm just gonna uh, post this to chat. That these are things okay. that I'm gonna be looking for in the future. They, I don't need them now. I have no money. But after we mm -hmm, kill a troll, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, your alchemist tools or your brewer's tools should have something to collect troll blood in. Um, let's see. That's a lot of string. Um, hmm. I don't have all of this in stock, but I can certainly find these things around town. No uh, rush. I don't do have you, money for most of Do you most need right these to, to, to defeat the troll? No, more more for post-troll. I figure see. I'd give you a notice. Uh, great. All right, well, it's quite simple. Why don't we... Oof, why don't we have this troll be a, a test of sorts? If you are able uh, to actually survive this job... Uh, she looks poignantly at Guy. Uh you could uh, come back to me and I will uh, I will consider some sponsorship opportunities uh, to, uh, you know, sort of uh, give you leads on uh, things that people need done, uh, mysterious happenings around the veil, and uh, also provisions uh, so that you can stay uh, healthy and safe uh, out in the world. Um... I could do a lot with that troll. Uh, so if you were to bring me the body, um, we could certainly have uh, uh, some profit uh, off of that. Um, I just think that in this world, uh, with the busy lives that adventurers lead, there needs to be that person back home, at their home base, their operation, that sort of keeps... Uh, keeps things grounded for them you're out and about you're you're changing the world you're making things better and i'm back here making sure people know about it and then making sure that uh, the next profitable endeavor is waiting for you hmm so uh I, how much of a cut are you taking Oh, well, I would like first dibs on any uh, monster parts or a treasure that you don't want and you would like to sell, um, for starters. Um, and then I am willing to provide each of you uh, with uh, essentially 50 gold worth of store credit. Um, we'll start at per month. Uh, but if you are doing better than that, we can move it to uh, a weekly basis. Uh, in exchange, of course, uh, I do get first dibs on the purchasing of your goods. And then also, um, well, I mean, if you could, you know, spread it around that this is your favorite shop in Drellin's Ferry and Elsa Vale. And I mean, those of you with shields, if you don't have to bear any sort of organizational or familiar... Um, Heraldry. I mean, you can certainly use my shop logo and colors. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. She's good. 50 yeah, she's good on the ground floor. Yeah, damn. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think I lost my last sponsorship with her, so this is probably good. Sure, I don't mind. It sounds reasonable enough. Okay. Um, her... Her heraldry is a uh, white rabbit with red eyes on a blue and black field. 
I don't know if that's a deal breaker for anybody or not. Mm. Doesn't really go with my color scheme. Mm. I don't like rabbits. <laughs> you know, I'll wear all a couple this morning. Ooh. Oh, we could make a very big, obnoxious cloak for Claude to wear with it on it. Because he's, you know, the mascot. Uh, her assistant, who is now no, uh, no longer uh, assisting uh, any patrons, uh, walks over and says, uh, uh, Or you could get him some rabbit ears, since he is already white. <laughs> I think Claude is just looking at the party with two dots and a line for her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh no! <laughs> Layla would like look at Orion and be like, "I don't know that you want to restrict his movement, you know." Yeah, he's gonna shake those off the second those are put on. I can I can test this. Do you want Do you want to see it just before you decide? If you want to lose an arm, go right ahead. <laughs> mm. Phelan would try to stop Guy if he does it, but at the same time, he wants to observe, so he won't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I just want uh, to observe. Yeah, Jarrett's eyes kind of like dart about, taking in all of you, uh, all of you, and your reactions and whatnot. You could tell that they are inciting you guys. Um, this is not an insight to figure out um, what you're plotting and what you're thinking, but more of a scrutinization, like a probably having to do an investigation and an insight. They're just trying to take measure of you um do you guys want to present something other than you are with a deception or performance or do you just let the scrutiny happen orion's pretty straightforward okay i think yeah, yeah. go ahead i apologize uh yeah Jert doesn't really hide who he is he just stands there with his arms crossed waiting okay um i feel like i already laid it out Phelan right. would keep a straight face, not wanting anything to be, not wanting to be seen. Right? Well, not seen, but more like she, he doesn't. He wouldn't want her to know how he feels on the matter. Okay. Okay. Clearly. So then, yeah, definitely give me a performance or deception then. Okay. I don't think Guy is hiding anything, but he's right. subconsciously he's turned his head and. Uh, okay. probably pretty prominently showing off that neck mark. Sure, sure. Um, so, Thanlin, uh, in an effort to appear um, completely neutral, like uh, straight-faced, um, completely unreadable, uh, you become uh, more readable, and uh, uh, everyone, you, you just kind of start, like, shifting, like, a bit uncomfortably, uh, and sort of like constantly adjusting like the tilt of your chin and uh, closing and opening your eyes to different degrees. Um, yeah. Uh, seeing you do this, uh, Jarrett smiles at you. Uh, and when she's done sort of taking everyone's measures, she says, I think that you might stand a chance against the River Troll, um, but it will be a difficult battle. Um, as a sign of, uh, good faith, I will give you this. Uh, and she reaches under the counter and she produces one healing push. <laughs> nice. Oh, these sell for a lot. Oh, yes, this is 50 gold coins. But, uh, I believe so strongly in your future successes that I want to be, I want to be the one that when one of you is near death's door, and you taste this sweet healing nectar upon your lips, you think of me and the great future we could have together. This lady knows her business. Yeah, what the fuck? Already got yeah. of everything we're going to bring back? Man, making moves. I guess we could Shaking wear some cut-off white rabbit foots or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, Orion, if had bunny ears on him, was basically a rabbit. He just turns and looks at you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. We can try that, too, if you want. I have uh, illusion magic. Jarrett says, as much as it pains me to say this, you may seek assistance from uh, Sir Tyrion, uh, if you can get an audience with him. Um, I understand that river trolls have unique resistances compared to their forest uh, and swamp-based cousins. 
Right, we were talking this before. Acidity and the cold? Uh, cold and fire. Ah, that's it. Alas, I do not have any frost oils in stock. Um, and normally he is my supplier, so... What was his name again? Uh, Sir Tyrion. Well, we do have most of it covered ourselves, but it could be useful to get some money if all of you were up for that. But the more people we have, the more we have to share the treasure. Mm, deal breaker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he nods. But, Barnabas, I remember back in Denova that you were working with something that could create fire from no fire? A little, uh, oh, mixture, right? Yes, I've made an alchemist fire in my day. I don't have the tools to do so, as I point to the shopping list with alchemist supplies at the top of it. Mm. She uh, she looks over at the shelf, and you see a pristine uh, alchemist uh, set uh, travel edition. And then she raises a finely maintained eyebrow at you. I jingle my very meager coin pouch. It's got mm. four gold in it. Well... I could take back the potion, give you the kids. Would it be possible for you to loan us the alchemist kit? She smiles and says, um, hmm, loan it to you, and then you'll pay me for it with the bounty you receive from uh, slaying the troll. You have my word. Or perhaps you'll use your monthly stipend once you sign on with Jarrett Sundries. I'm happily paid off in tools. I'm uh, missing a few things from my set, if you notice. Okay, she nods, and uh, Winter's Wind goes and takes it off the shelf uh, and writes up a bill of sale. Um, and it basically just says, on loan, and then asks you to sign it. I give it a, my John Hancock. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Right. This is a way to. So you have the kit, but now you still need the raw materials to make the. Uh, um, I have no idea. Fire. Are. Yeah. Um. So without a cost reduction, um, basically, in order to keep the Fifth Age of Magic from becoming like merchants and. Um, I don't know, another M word, but uh, Merchants and Landlords, the game, um, they basically kind of just say, uh, NPC craftsmen, are that's all they do with their life is they craft shit. So they make things for less than the cost, and then they sell it for more than the cost, and, you know, that's how they make money. Um, adventuring PCs and stuff like that, unless you have some kind of class feature or something like that, um, you're generally making things at cost, but you're making them yourself. So you don't have to worry about finding it at a store or anything like that. So an alchemist fire would still cost as much as an alchemist fire, but you'd still be able to make it yourself. Unless, of I course, see. you had a class feature or something like that that allows you to make things cheaper. Right. Right. Or if you had ingredients that would essentially count towards the cost of the crafting. Hmm. hmm. That reminds me. So of it still would cost us, I think, it's 50 to 100 gold. I forget which one. Uh, to even buy a, an alchemist fire, so I don't think we're gonna be able to make this today. I, I think it's like forty gold. That she just yeah, it's it. it's fifty gold for alchemist fire. Yeah, it's like one of the more expensive tools. We might need to rely on our actual class abilities for this one. Well, well, I've got, got fire covered. Um, I, I I can summon a great many fire spells. Yeah, J Jared uh, says. I mean, a torch would cause fire. I mean, of course, if it's underwater. I you know what? I'm not an adventurer. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. I'll, I'll get back to work. Uh, Miss Jarrett, do you happen to have any harvesting tools? I was actually uh, about to ask the same thing. She gives you a Cheshire Cat smile and says, Oh, I certainly do. I suppose you would also like those on loan? Guy will need it. Sounds like a good deal. It would. <laughs> hmm. Well, this is, of course under the uh, assumption that you'll be bringing the troll's remains back to me so that we can uh, all profit off of it. Well, I came out west to start looking at some other places for business, so may as well start here. Okay. Uh, she nods and whispers wind goes and uh, grabs a harvesting kit 
uh, and brings it over, writes up a bill of sale, says on loan. How much do those go for these days anyway? I believe uh, 50 gold. Oof. That's a hell of a markup. Uh, the tools ain't I cheap. Think, I think the patch note said 30. <laughs> but she's charging 30 out of 50. <laughs> I mean, she's, you guys have told a merchant that you have no money and that you're willing to, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take things on loan, so, yeah. It's a buyer's market. Um, she will... Or, sorry, uh, Orion will also kind of rustle into his pouch and produce a gold and place it on the counter. Uh, mm. Put your flowers earlier. Sorry about that. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the coin disappears rather quickly. And... Uh, she says, um, accidents happen. Yeah, if we're here more often, it may be more than just one accident. I would very much like you to succeed. So even though it risks your loyalties and interests being pulled in too many directions, I might suggest that you go speak with uh, Avarthel, the druid. Uh, they may have information about the troll that others do not. Uh, Sir Terran, of course, could supply you with the means uh, to destroy the troll. Um, knowledge and power in equal measure might be what's required. Who is Sir Terran? <laughs> uh, Sir Terran the Wise is our resident wizard. Oh. She's, like, immediately disinterested. <laughs> yeah. Would Phelan know about him? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's, uh, he's on the council. Um, he's kind of, he's a little bit, a little bit douchey. He's a little bit of a douche. Um, like, uh, there's not a lot of wizards in the Vale. Uh, and he's, like, the only wizard for many, many, many miles. Like, a, I think a couple towns over. I think the next wizard's all the way in Brindle. Oh God! Yeah. So much like much like normal fifth edition D and D, um, there's just not a lot of wizards going around. Um, and so he kind of has that vibe of like I'm a I'm a powerful retired wizard. Um, I'm better than everybody else. Uh, kind kind of deal. So, uh, he is a he is a halfling, and he lives in a mansion, um, north of town along the river. Sandlin, we've been over this. It's his name is Sir Taran, but it's one word. He's not a knight. It's that a confusing. Yeah, but he. Uh, never mind. I had thought the same thing when I had heard Sir that he might have been an interesting profession, like a knight. Uh, no, he's uh, he's Sir Tiran the Wise. Well, Wizards are that. pretty interesting. They're very smart. And then uh, Jared says, and his house is amazing. Oh, don't be the judge of that. Some might call it magnificent. Oh, gosh. Right, Ooh. now now that we've gotten Jared, he turns around, still audible to Jared, we should go try to get more money out of the, what was it, the council? That was next oh, yeah. on the list. There was some yeah. discussion of them forming a bounty on this troll. But... Yeah, but we also thought about at the end of the session maybe waiting until after we killed the troll to ask them because it would suck if we had to like fail or, or retreat at any, at, any, at any point. I think we'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, running is always an option, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and Guy uh, has had <clears throat> a couple previous adventuring parties, so I mean. Uh, that uh, that is something. rumors, that is uh, slander, that is uh, unconfirmed. <laughs> um, so yeah, Jert comes back to the group. He's like stuffing a couple of bits of bark and soil into a, a pouch on his belt. Um, I mean, do you want to go talk? It's, to it's also after seven p.m. Um, even J like Jarrett's—they've oh, already put the clothes sign up. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Jert then... the clothes sign and shrugs. I mean, you guys are inside the shop, but you saw. Um, Winter's Wind kind of go up and start closing, you know, closing up shop and turning the shop signs and all that kind of stuff. I guess uh, the best thing we can do is perhaps 
rest for now and wake up early tomorrow morning to go speak to the wizard. Yeah, well, and Everthel. Um, uh, Everthel will probably be able to give us better advice on how to find the thing. I think it's just in the river. More uh, so, likely to be a plate than the wizard. So Winter's Wind, um, she uh, she kind of uh, chuckles to herself um, and says, um, "Yes, there's no there's no rush. Uh, besides, if the troll attacks anyone during the night, it will simply raise the value of removing it." Oh, that's right. Uh, don't Mainland know. Mainland gives Gaius. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm not sure if I feel good about other people getting hurt when we could have handled this. No, we don't know that we can handle this yet. I don't think we will be able to tonight, but if we could tomorrow, that would be the best. But maybe I we think... could go see Averthel tonight and carefully talk with. There at the end, whatever his name was tomorrow. Ooh, if you want to see the, uh, if you want to see her tonight, you'll need to make haste. They only run the ferry until nine p.m. Maybe we can get that done. Maybe we have less than the sleep tomorrow. Sounds good to me. And we definitely shouldn't fight this thing at night. I look around at our mostly human party. It's like we might have trouble seeing it. I won't. Wait, you guys can't see in the dark. Well, I mean. Well really? enough to get around. We do have torches. Huh, never thought of that. I can always help with that too. Uh, I th agree, we should go see the druid post haste. Uh, I'm sure she'll enjoy us coming in this late. And if we're not quick enough, and she's more enjoyable than we thought, we can always spend the night in the forest. <sighs> sure. Let's go camp in the forest. That's lovely. Layla's got like a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm fine with that as well. I figured you would be. Uh, but we can also post up next to the river to make sure on our side, if we're across the ferry, no one gets attacked. Because on this side we have the guard, and we all know the guard are wink. He says wink. Protecting the town from the troll. No, no, it's fine. They're useless. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, condemnation. Damn. Damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Th Thanlin and anyone else who's been in town for a while, uh, you know that the resident druid, um, they live in a uh, small clearing in the uh, southwestern uh, woods. Uh, location 19 on your map. Um, this is called by the locals uh, the Old Ones. And it is essentially a um, circle of stones uh, that no one can remember how they got there. Um, but they've always been sacred to um, the druids or people who practice the druidic arts. Um, and let's see. They are... Um, willing to trade um, druidic services uh, in exchange for assistance caring for um, the local wildlife uh, etc etc um, like many urban druids uh, they were more than likely assigned this, um, this station by their druid circle um, because they are sort of you know Hey, everybody, it's cool that you got this town, but you don't want to, like, overdevelop, and you don't want to, like, dredge the river. You know, e e eco stuff, you know what I'm saying? So they're they're kind of there to be, like, an ecological advisor on the, the town council uh, kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, they are, uh, in fact, a druid, and I don't believe this particular druid is associated with your circle of druids, um, Layla. If your druids are the uh, operating out of um, Witchcross and um, the Witchwood, I not a sh I can't recall off the top of my head. Did you did you define um, specifically where, where you're probably? Circle? Yeah, I think they're more like 
There's probably a few in which would, but I think they're more in like the, the stars or everything. Probably more in like the mountains, like the giant mountains, the red rock. Honestly. Oh, okay, dope, dope, dope. All right, uh, that's good because the the witch cross ones are very. Yeah, gives you a they're little very, bit of free reign there. Yeah, they're very edge lord. Yeah, they're very yeah, they're very edge lord the druids mountains. over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, that works. Uh, you guys probably would have professional courtesy. Obviously, you share the druidic language, the secret language of druids. Um, but you, uh, beyond that, you probably haven't met this person before. I'm assuming. I don't know if mm -hmm. you've come this far, this far west or not. Uh, not long enough to I think have. It's probably like heard of this one but hasn't went out to meet them okay all right well if you want to travel there um you could head on over uh they run the ferry every hour so you guys would basically be hanging out until um eight and then the ferry would kind of head across uh to take you there i guess it would be Let's say 30 minutes, every 30 minutes, but it's on a particular side of the river every hour, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to get the bus schedule right. Right, 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 right. All right. So we will assume, um, you know what? I'll make a note right now on the map in case this ever comes up in the future. Uh, let's see. Did Jerry give a name of who that druid is or? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Avarthel. All right, so let me see. This will be every uh, hour and 30 on this side, and then we'll do every hour on the other side. So you guys could rush over there and catch it and then head over. There we go. All right, that works. Man wild doing this uh this, this low level D, D where people just can't teleport and fly everywhere so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, running from yeah. the bus with toast in our mouth yeah yeah it's adorable i can teleport uh, oh whoops there we go all right uh let's see still haven't gotten a mod for my brave browser to auto loop uh not music for me automatically okay so, yeah, I'll assume that you guys uh, hustle over and take the ferry across. Um, the ferry does cost money uh, to cross. Uh, Thanlin, you will not be charged because you are a town guard. And you know how cops get free donuts and all that kind of stuff. Um, yes. Yes. Am uh, I charged? <laughs> um, I mean, you could try and uh, social skills bamboozle your way into not being charged. That's right. I will. I will do so. I don't want to take up too much more time, though. I mean, I it's it's like literally that. like uh, when Matt Mercer charges his high level characters for food. It, it's like I believe one. Uh, sorry, three silver uh, per person to cross. That's uh, I think. Oh, that's convert. actually to cross with a mount. It's actually only one silver to cross uh, if you don't have a mount. So it's it's a negligible amount of money. But I guess well, at your level. Shit. I guess at your level, it's it's still you know if you're it's gonna be two silver if you're crossing and coming back. So six silver nothing. for me and Claude then. Oh, I also have a mod installed that does auto conversions on money, so that you it always tries to make you have the most, I believe, gold um, or platinum if you uh, if you're doing stuff. So it'll make change for you essentially. I'll still try to wiggle my way out of it. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Um, since it's such a paltry amount, just give me a quick um, persuasion. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. Yeah, the person that's there, uh, they, <laughs> they, they look you right in the face and they say, uh, I ain't never forgot what you've done to my sister. She still cries for you. Oh. Was that boring? And he, <laughs> his face starts to turn very red. Um, and the hand that is holding out uh, palm up for the uh, the silver piece begins to shake uh, with repressed violence. <laughs> Family will rush in between them and say, yeah. whoa, 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 calm down. Lean up Don't leave like any violence. 
I'm okay, like, he's okay. getting charges extra. Stop talking. Th Thalen, you are uh, you are a, a a guard. So go ahead and give me a persuasion. I'll give you advantage on this one because ain't nobody want to go to jail tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Even even for their sister's honor. Okay, okay. He uh he calms he calms down. He says, "Yeah, you're not worth it. Give me the silver piece. I have gold. I can can, can you break it?" Oh my god. Just give him one gold piece, guy. Just uh, give him one gold piece. I only have three. He give takes your, he takes your gold and he unsnaps his fanny pack and because they don't have zippers uh this far away from uh uh D Denivar. And uh he reaches in there and he pulls out he pulls out your nine silver and change. Um while this is happening, um you guys hear uh like a rowdy brawl kind of break out um about a about a hundred feet away, um, along the docks, um, like nearby, uh, you look over and even in the shadows of the night, you do see that like three people are just, uh, beating the crap out of each other. And the guy taking your money for the ferry, he just says, uh, oh, this is happening all the time lately. So aggravating. They're just, everybody's just drunk all the time. Uh, I can't stand it. I've talked to Drathgar about it, and he doesn't know what to do either. And we went and talked to the guards, but they gave us the same spiel they always do. Oh, yeah, we'll look into it, blah, blah, blah. People are allowed to drink. There's no laws against drinking. Blah, blah, blah. It's getting out of control. I heard, I heard that this kind of, this kind of excessive alcoholism is, is, is even extending to, to the green apple. And, and and maybe even maybe even the old inn. I don't I don't know. I don't go there. I I like to keep you know. I'm an apple boy. You know, I'm an apple boy. I like to go. I like to go to the old apple. But mm, you smell like one. He uh his his mouth turns into a, a strong line and he stares down at you. Uh <laughs> and he says uh. Mm -hmm. uh I'm gonna ask. How long has this been going on? Oh, the uh, the drunken disorderliness, eh, it's been picking up over the last three or four days. I mean, again, the first couple of nights, we thought it was just an isolated incident, but it's happening all the time. I was going to look into it myself, but, you know, I didn't. But yeah, there's been some brawls over at the Green Apple as well. Uh, you know, the Green Apple is the big alehouse, tap house, um... Uh, restaurants, uh, eatery, town hall um, situation run by a uh, dwarven woman named Tharma. Uh, guy, you frequent uh, Kellen's quite a bit. Um, now that you're thinking about it, there have been a lot more drunk people than usual. Like people that just aren't holding their liquor well. Do I think it's a problem with You didn't alcohol? think anything of it until now. And now you start, like, looking back. You know how they do, like, the memory cuts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and over the last three or four days, there have been a lot more people that have been very rowdy uh, when they got, got to drinking. As a bartender and proficiency with poisoners, can, can I make a history check to, like, if I notice it might be a harder alcohol? Uh, without even making the check, just with those qualifications, you know that some of the people didn't even drink that much. Um, and they, they were just, you know, drinking all different types of, of beverages. There wasn't, like, a specific beverage that was causing this reaction. But some people were drinking a lot, some people were only drinking a little, and they were still getting, in some cases, violently drunk. In other cases, just, um, belligerent or a little too publicly lewd, um, disorderly. Now, Kellen is a rough and rowdy boy. I mean, he a halfling, but he a 18 strength halfling. Uh, and he's not afraid to throw people out. Uh, dude kind of works as his own bouncer sort of thing. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, now that you think about it, there have been more than usual. Right. We'll, we'll look into that for your sister's honor. Just get on the boat! Uh, and he, uh, just kind of turns away from you. <clears throat> um, as he walks away, they don't want to go up to him and ask, Where did the first incident take place? 
Oh, the first incident? Uh, you mean the first, like, rowdy fight that I saw? Um, it was, uh, it was, just, I don't know, right over there. Uh, he just points to, like, uh, one of the docks, like, one of the piers. Mm. Uh, I lean into a Guy and I say, well, perhaps there was something wrong with the brew, the way it was brewed. Sometimes ingredients get tainted. Uh, as someone who's proficient in brewing and medicine, could I, like, make a check to see oh, if I know... If, uh, yeah, something I, like ergot is in play here. Yeah, uh, that would be a common thing known to somebody trained in brewer's tools that there can be some like, molds and um, other sort of bacteria that can get into a brew that could mess people up. Um, so that could be something to do. Both, um, I believe, both Drellin and Tharma brew their own stuff as well as serving imported stuff. So they both have brewing uh, facilities uh, on the property. I have to check out those facilities later. Mm -hmm. Guy will mm -hmm. not. Say. I just what? fill it up, fill it up that fucking quest lock. Just fill it up that quest lock. My thought is <laughs> perhaps, you know, they must use water for the alcohol. Maybe it's the river. Good and call. Tribal troll. Oh. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. Could be, but. It is also spring, and is it not normal for people to get more rowdy this time of year? Not whenever you have a little bit of a shot. I've been to Drellins for a while, and they are hard drinkers. All right, well, we'll breach that when we reach the mainland again. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so the ferry is operated. Uh, by a man named uh, Drathgar um, and he uh, is the great grand nephew of Adrelin himself, the founder of Adrelin's Ferry um, so he's got family money, but he's one of them family money guys that uh, wakes up at the crack of dawn and then works like uh, a 16 hour day like side by side with his people never actually like enjoys having all this money um, he enjoys uh, working hard so he's like a he's like family money but f prefers that more hands on blue collar life uh, essentially uh, so he's well he's well loved and respected by the people of the town and technically he is also on the town council damn guy you made a big enemy no, 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 that, that guy, no, that guy was just Don Lar. The, yeah, he oh, okay. just, yeah, he oh, just, just employee. yeah, he's just an employee, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Don, yeah, Don Lar, he, he's whatever, so, so, he's just a local, local rowdy boy, so. That is what guy says verbatim. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> on the other side, on the uh, other side of the river, uh, the crossing does take about 20 minutes or so, which gives them time to kind of uh, load more people up. There are people that kind of get off with you and then get on to go back across the other side. Um, let's see. So that puts you very close to 8 o'clock. Uh, let's see. Man, I was so excited with this new update that they would finally have fixed uh, the calendar clock, but it's still kind of janky oh well um all right right next to the docks on this side <clears throat> is gendar's warehouse um basically being a crossroads area um this is a place where people can store their goods um as needed so um if you're a merchant and you're traveling like all over the place going to the northern realms and the southern realms um going back to the um to the coastline etc uh you don't always want to carry all your shit with you all the time so in a trade city like this uh, or trade town um it actually is very useful to have a uh, place where you could store stuff right because uh, you're coming back from the Southlands and you've got Southern Spices and you're like, eh, Southern Spices aren't selling well in Denivar, uh, Denivar right now, but we're headed to Denivar. Let's leave the Spices here. And then when we head north on our way, you know, when we come back and head north, we'll pick up the Spices from here. We don't have to haul them all the way back and then all the way back again. You get, you know, shipping shit. Um, so this is Jendar's warehouse. Uh, Jendar is in a fierce rivalry with his neighbor over here. Um... 
this is uh, Sterile's provisioning. Um, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. That's not who he's in competition with. His competition is across the river. Here we go. Uh, with Eormel. So, 13 and 17 are both warehouses, and they're both in, like, a businessman feud with each other. Um, constantly trying to undercut each other, um, talk shit about each other, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, also on the side of the river is Gossler's Brew House, which is uh, a brewery. Um, and it is run by Gossler, who is a, a handsome half-orc. And uh, he is said to have trained in the arts of brewing with both the dwarves, the halflings, and the shadowy elves of the uh, the Witchwoods. Uh, so, you know, he, he might also have some leads if you cared about why people were getting drunk and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, 18 is Sterile's Provisioning, and this is essentially a general goods store. So unlike um, Jarrett's shop that sells high-end goods and possibly magical equipment, this guy just sells all the basic bitch adventuring gear that you would need um including simple weapons and light armors uh if you wanted anything better than that if you wanted like medium heavy armor or martial weapons you would have to go to the local smithy uh area five run by morlin cole hewer all right so you have two ways of getting to avarthel but it is going to be a hike um we're talking she's only about I don't know, 650 feet away, um, according to the map, but you either need to go through the woods, uh, follow the road all the way around and then cut through a smaller amount of woods, or walk along the coastline of the river. I'm sure nothing bad will happen if you do that. So, how do you guys want to reach uh, the old ones? I could see through the wood. I agree, and this time we say that we could go stop at the brew house before the ferry makes it back. I like that plan. Lead the way, Ryan. You're you're good at leading us through the woods, right? Uh, that I am. Sure, you take the lead. Hmm? Oh, uh, <laughs> sure. We'll be right behind you. Uh, all right. And uh, I'll walk directly behind me. Guy will will, will lead uh, hesitantly. Oh, let me turn on. Now that you're kind of getting on the outskirts of time, or time, outskirts of town. Outskirts uh, of time already? Oh, man. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> uh, Level three. Di different campaign, different campaign. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll play the most iconic of all nighttime music tracks. Uh, all right. Let's see. Okay, so Guy, uh, you lead everybody, I guess, between <laughs> between these two buildings uh, towards the woods. That's right. And once we get to the actual forest, Guy is notably, but quickly, going to turn to Jert, <laughs> and he's going to start matching foot patterns. And for a moment, Jert, you would see you and his eye lock, and his eye color would match yours. And mm -hmm. uh, Guy is going to steal your survival proficiency if you have it. Oh, oh my! <laughs> okay, so so is it class abilities or skill proficiencies? Uh, skill proficiencies. So oh, okay, okay. So gonna, yeah, I'm I do gonna, definitely have it. Yeah. So I'll take your survival proficiency and. Uh, do you and take it or do you just copy? It? I copy it, but it's, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm not taking it away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, he just his eyes uh, kind of narrow a little bit, but he nods and waits for you to do your thing. Now, that doesn't mean I'm good at it, but I'll do it. <laughs> Does this have, like, any sort of, like, visual? Or is she, like, studying someone up a little bit? or uh, Like, a, a, he would basically... I think Jert would be the one that notices it most because he starts walking a little bit like Jert. Like, he starts noticing things that Jert would. Patterns that maybe you were taught Jert or you knew that you would do as you went through the forest, maybe subconsciously. Guy starts doing. And Guy looks like a man who has never walked in the forest for more than a quick jaunt um, or, you know, for some fun. But he starts doing things that are far more professional, like a tracker. Yeah, um, Jert, uh, 
after it recognizes your movements and remembers this uh, for the next 30 days. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I, I could still use some help uh, if, if one of you don't mind. I just thought it would be funny. I can, okay. I can help out. All right. Um, with assistance, uh, you do incredibly well. Uh, you got a nat 20. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, without assistance, it would not have been so good. <laughs> um, all right. So together, you guys navigate the woods rather quickly. Uh, and then you come upon a uh, clearing uh, in the forest. And you see those ancient uh, stones. All right. Uh, mm. By now, it is very dark. Uh, so what are you guys doing for light? Um, I think Layla would have used her produce flame to mm -hmm. just kind of make a little torch light as we go along the woods. Okay. Yeah. The woods are a little spooky for those of you who don't go into the woods. Um, according to our calendar, um, there is still quite a bit of uh, moon present, though. Uh, it is a waning gibbous uh, currently. So, uh, but the canopy of the trees above sort of uh, makes that moonlight filter in uh, in beautiful yet spooky ways. Uh, when you step into the clearing, um, you see that no one is around. Uh, what do you do? Is if, there any sort of uh, normal religious practice for these kind of stones? To like, you know, what you do w with them? Out of curiosity. Oh, um, as a druid, a druid circle is a place of power, for sure. So, um, you know, you would come here to pray and meditate. Um, it, it's central to, like, the rituals that you guys mm -hmm. perform and all that jazz. Um, for, um, everyone else, um, this is kind of a mys mysterious place. Um, you do know that people who worship, uh, Melora, the Wild Mother, um, uh, kind of use this as a shrine to her. And the primary offering that locals will leave is essentially just food and, like, salt licks and, and things like that that would be beneficial to animals who might come to the shrine. Um... So it's kind of like a nice, it has a good aligned vibe to it if there was, you know, an alignment system. Like, you don't feel any sense of, like, danger, like, nothing ominous about this. Um, the It's very tranquil. You do hear animal sounds uh, off in the distance. There's nothing, nothing scary in that regard. Uh, you just don't see the presence of any um, people or person. Um, I think she would... Like, uh, in, she would start to approach it, and she would kind of uh, lean down, like, scoop her hand across some of the ground, get some, like, dirt on her hands, rub mm -hmm. them together, and go up to one of the stones and just kind of, like, press her hand against it, leaving, like, an imprint. Um, and then just kind of look on the ground to see if there was, like, any sort of ritual in motion or... Well, as you do, uh, as a druid, um, your handprints uh, <laughs> begins to glow with sort of a teal light sort of the color of a beautiful um pond or or um the the ocean and um as you pull your hand away there's sort of that lingering like blue magic uh from the stone and your hand um nothing like mechanical just sort of a an acknowledgement of your power and your dedication um you hear from the uh treetops nearby uh in druidic a voice uh, calls out, um, Well, met sister, you tend your flame carefully here in the mother's woods. What do you and your companions seek at this late hour? Uh, and as you look, you see sitting in a tree uh, is a half-elven uh, person. Um, and they are kind of just uh, looking down at you guys. Um... Their eyes kind of have that semi-shimmer that, like, dark vision um, uh, species have when it's, like, really dark and their eyes are taking in all the lights to kind of get that extra extra vision. 
Um, she would reply back in comments so that everyone that's with her would know what she's saying as well. And would say, uh, in return, a place to nod our head away for the night would be nice, and as well, some information. We it's... seek a beast that has been tearing this land asunder. And oh. given time, we'll only tear it worse. Hmm. And you speak of the Hydra, then? Of the flooded forest west of here? Maybe eventually, but for now we speak of the troll. Ah. Hmm. Although. I Although. would not say no to information about that Hydra. Hmm. Well, one problem at a time. The Hydra seems to be keeping to itself for now, but such creatures have a ravenous appetite, and much as the troll, with its appetite and regenerative properties, it can very quickly become a detriment to the ecosystem. I'm not 100% sure where the Hydra came from. Based on its coloration, though, it is uh, a Fen Hydra. Uh meaning it's very poisonous. Uh, is he replying in direct still? Oh, uh, no. They, they are now talking in okay. um, common, so you know, since okay. you switched to common. Yeah. Out of if, a courtesy. If that uh, Hydra is different than a normal Hydra, does it have different resistances? Mm, resistances. Uh, they will make a, a knowledge nature. Oh, you're referring to the regenerative properties and how best to shut them down. That's correct. I believe fire still does the trick. Excellent. But be warned. Their bite is poisonous. Their blood is poisonous. And they can vomit forth uh, blood from their mouths uh, and spray it a great distance. That sounds quite nasty. Hmm. Zern. Monstrosity. What do you expect? So that troll. That troll. I, think I imagine that the troll uh, floated down river from um, the marshlands uh, north of here. We have been hired to kill it. No. Well, that is beneficial to me, so I will provide whatever information I can. Do you have coin? Do I have coin? You are already you are already being paid. Beneficial to the land. I see no reason to pay you further. Uh, you are a part of this community as well. Protecting one's community is. A great good. Perhaps you could just impart wisdom upon us. Certainly. What would you like to know about the creature? Well, we already know that it's weak against fire and ice. This is correct, true? Impressive. Can you tell uh, us anything about its habits? Like when it er er emerges, if it's nocturnal or comes out during the day? Ah, uh, certainly. Uh, let's see... Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, trolls are giants, and they are possessed of dark vision. Um, they generally hunt when, or they're they're active when hunting is best. Right now, the creature seems content to gorge itself on the rich. Um, fish population uh, that is maintained by the fishermen of this, uh, this settlement. Though I imagine as the fish begin to leave the area uh, or diminish, it will begin looking for more prey on land. Um, their preferred uh, schedule is to be nocturnal. But again, they will shift their schedule based on what works best for hunting. Hunger and is their number one motivator. Do not be fooled, though. 
They are not a beast or even a monster. This is a thinking being. At least as smart as your average person in, uh, or, or human being. Maybe a slightly denser and uneducated, but clever and crafty. Can they breathe underwater? Oh, they are amphibious. More than likely, they're keeping their lair uh, beneath the water. Is there a good way to draw it out other than food? Unlikely. Would you say that they are their lair is in the water? Is it a subterranean or a sub-aquatic cave? Hmm. I trolls do love caves. The only thing I could think of is that it would have found a cave or cave-like um, area along either of the coasts of the river or within the ruins of the old bridge. Those pylons go deep into the mud of the riverbed. Over time, there could have been some uh, erosion that sort of opened up pockets that could serve as a layer. Sounds like a good bet. Hmm. What is the local fish? Hmm. The local fish uh, in the river? <laughs> Cod, salmon. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I need to know what I'm working with. Certainly. Um... The Drellin River is renowned for uh, the copperback trout. Oh, difficult, but I can do it. One of you had a great idea to lure it out with food. Now, I know all the best fish recipes, so perhaps I can make some blanche berrier? Honestly, it probably would enjoy some things that's probably spoilt and rotten smelling. The stronger, the better. Well, I can the creature do that eats things raw most of the time. Now, this is a creature that is intelligent and eats the flesh of other intelligent beings. It might be pacified for now, consuming all of the fish, but if it had its way, if it had its choice, it would gobble up the local children in a heartbeat. The creature's are irredeemably evil, and they delight in the suffering of others. Well, if, we they can, if they can cause suffering and fill their bellies at the same time, it is a good day for a troll. I hate to put myself in the, the barrel that's getting shot into, but um, I do. I am roughly child-sized. I could maybe pose as Oh, bait. Also, you're a mouseskin, right? I think. Or, 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 or is that? Oh, sorry, I'm still right. learning everybody's voices. Was that? Right. Was that? Was, was that Barnabas? Barnabas? Yeah. Okay, Barnabas, you're not as tasty as a mousekin. A mousekin is the most delicious meat in all of Dungeons and Dragons. I there is, yeah. There oh. is no, yeah. There is no meat sweeter, uh, more delicate, and more delicious. It, it, without any cooking skill, it is like a buttery filet mignon when you bite into a uh, mousekin. Just throw me between the uh, two pieces of bread. <laughs> yeah. And, dra and drag you behind a boat. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I think during all this troll talk, I think Claude is getting, like, visibly agitated, and Orion's just kind of calming him down. Mm -hmm. This may sound, uh, assuming that was information shared, um, well, Halo would say it may sound horrible, but we could bleed you some tonight not enough that it would detriment you and coat something in it to lure it at least to the edge of its caverns do. we don't want it to bring it out so far that it's in the town but caverns are dangerous yeah but if we want to hit this thing with fire we're going to have to get it out of the water we need to avoid fighting in the water as much as possible none of us would survive a fight like that yeah, I'm not a great swimmer. Yeah, me neither. Have we decided if we're going to rest here? Avatha, would you be amenable to that? It is strange, but um, you walk with a druid, and I trust her judgment. 
Okay. Jared is going to find a log, <laughs> sit down, and uh, take out the soil and uh, seeds he was picking up earlier and start working on healing selves. Oh. Uh, <laughs> when he says that, Layla's very blunt response would be, Yes, but if any of you break any of the stones, we will sacrifice you into them. <laughs> and she says it with like a little bit of like a, a of like it's a joke, but it's just straight faced enough that you might not be able to tell. I think Orion's used to this uh, cut and dry humor of Layla's. I think you'll also turn to uh, to the druid and be like, I don't think we introduced ourselves. We just kind of came to your clearing. Uh, my name is Orion, and this is Claude here. A magnificent beast, and bound to you. Not sure about bound, but he's my he's my buddy. Oh, I can see the threads that are woven between his heart and yours. He he would die for you. Just looks at Claude like, are you, are you sure about that, buddy? Uh, Claude looks at you, and he makes, like, you know, like, Wookiee sounds, uh, and the subtitles say, I swore a Wookiee life debt to keep you safe and protect oh. you. Oh. Alright, we're gonna have to talk about this. <laughs> uh, Thalen will walk up to the druid with his arm, with his hand out for a handshake and say, um, Oh, they're still up in the tree, but they looked out at your hand. Uh, or they looked out at your approach. I assume you, you wouldn't do the hand because they're too far away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they look down at you and say, um, oh, one of the guard. I've seen you before, right? I certainly hope so. And if not, well, might as well make an introduction. Hello. Hmm. Um, they make the face of a person who is reaching their limit of people that they've wanted to interact with uh, this late at night. <laughs> um, but they, they nod their head and say, Ah, uh, yes, I'm uh, Avartel, which you already knew, and you are Thanlin uh, of the Guard. It's great to meet you. Yeah. They know my name. Well, your, your allies have been chattering about. Correct. And Thanlin will, like, Back of his head and just walk away. <laughs> uh, before he settles in, Barnabas will go into his herbalism pouch, pull a little box, and pull a rolled uh, cigarette out of it. And look to Layla. He's like, "Do you think it's okay if I smoke here? And how do they feel about fire?" As long as you contain it. All right, Barnabas. Oh. Yeah, my guy. Come here, uh, I mean, uh, I'll share with you if you'd like, but I, oh, need, of course. Uh, I need your herbalism kit. Yep, uh, uh, anytime. Do you have some anise? Oh, yeah. Excellent. It's used in childhood medicines around the yeah. Jordan. I love licorice flavor. Oh, uh, perfect. <laughs> and uh, if you come over, Guy is pulling out par uh, fresh parsley, some sage ginger, has some salt and pepper, and he's waiting expectantly for Orion. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna make a uh, a decoy using mouse kin uh, flavoring. Uh, anise is something that is used in childhood medicine, or at least smells like it. So hopefully that will lure in the troll, because that's what children smell like. <laughs> so wait, are you making like like a, a cooking rub that you're gonna put on Orion to make Orion like smell smell tastier? Is that I was I was going to use a. Um, replacement meat such as salmon or uh -huh. trout or something local um, okay. to smell like Orion and be coated in his blood a little bit as we oh suggested. so you want him nearby so you're gonna like sniff him adjust your seasonings sniff his fur again adjust the seasonings try to try to make it as close to mousekin scented as possible that's right and okay uh, okay the blood I think if Orion's willing to give it would sell the whole thing okay I think he's just looking at you like, no. <laughs> oh, you know what? They, no, that's my bad. Someone else offered for you to do it. That wasn't you. Um, that's no. I understand. Uh, when you head over to Jert, he is finishing up some healing salves, and he actually passes you one. Uh, it's a small little uh, vial, and in it is this kind of dirty green 
looking uh, liquid. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Layla, one for you too. Uh, so Jer, Orion, and Layla will have 1d4 healing salves that last for 24 hours. Oh, I have to heal 1d4? Yep, just 1d4 cool. flat, no bonus. Nice. Oh. And then uh, Jert is going to remain quiet after that and fit, switch his, uh, for the rest of the long rest, he's going to switch his study target from Fey to Giant. Now, um, Jert, would you would you feel more comfortable sleeping out here in the woods than you would having, you know, um, slept at the inn ba would, based yeah. on what you've been through? Yeah, that's why he was fine coming out here in the first place and is already getting comfortable and doing his nightly routine. All right, fair enough. If um, Everthal would be willing to talk more, uh, Layla would like to, but he looks like he's like, oof, that's enough conversation for the day. Um, it bit. looks like out of professional courtesy, they would continue to talk to you about work stuff, but they definitely would keep it work related, you know, druid work related. So, mm. you know, yeah, she, she was just kind of kind of like, uh, ask him some stuff about the town. Okay. Um, if that, if he would be into that. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Um, which would be along the lines of her, more or less, while everyone else is kind of uh, over there. She would kind of approach him uh, underneath the tree, and she would say in, in, in Dreadic to him, kind of softly and quietly, The illusion of safety this town's bringing seems to be crashing down on itself. People seem to be at each other's throats. And I can't even remember all the things I've heard in the last 24 hours that seem to be going wrong here. Hmm. It all does seem to be falling apart all at once. I'm not sure if you've felt it yet, but... The... The border between the Feywild and here is becoming tenuously thin. I've felt something, but no, I haven't placed what it was. That could be good or bad. I told your allies the troll likely floated down river from the marshlands to the north, but I am beginning to wonder. Perhaps it's stumbled in from the Fey. This town, this ideal they work for and its toil to keep afloat, it's, it's going to come to a halt, it seems. I don't know. But I hope they haven't forgotten how to forge and fend for themselves. We're just mm. going to, I guess, I'm going to try to keep these people busy. There's a farm, that hydra in the distance. I think there was something mentioned of vermin infestations. And just as we passed here, people, as I said, had each other's throats drunken, rabble-rousing, and to kind of an extreme. Do you have any idea on any of this? Any suggestions? <laughs> well, I'm sure you know that it is a wild world. Especially outside of the small, civilized points of light that the... Um, that the civilized races have carved out for themselves. Always nature seeks to reclaim what was taken. The people of Drellin's Ferry have always been fair with the land. They replant trees that are cut down. They rotate crops so as not to overburden the soil. They are a good people and worth protecting. They pay their homages. They do. And they are content with what they have. The settlement has grown in the time since it was founded, but could have grown so much more. But they are, again, content with this simple and functional life 
that they have all carved out for themselves. It is why I gladly serve this community as needed. Then I suppose I will see what we can do to push back a little bit, give them some room to breathe. And if I see anything on the horizon, I will to send an animal to you with word, and perhaps you could do the same with me. Now, if you do decide to head into the flooded woods, um, you will want to keep an eye out for an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Jor. He's a, a ranger. He and his hounds... Um, do their part to keep the more dangerous creatures of the flooded forest um, from overpopulating and becoming a nuisance or even a danger to travelers on the roads. It is likely that he has been stalking and studying the Hydra uh, for quite some time, but is far too wise to attack it on his own. He would most surely appreciate allies in such an endeavor. She just kind of nods, um, seems to be thinking, and then kind of shakes her head, realizing she's been in her headspace for probably like a full minute, and just mm -hmm. goes, you should, you should go. You can tell that we're a bit I trust here. the care of this grove to you, sister. Uh, and they, you know, kind of like, walk the, uh, you know, the branches of the trees until they are kind of obscured by shadow. All right. So you guys settle in for the night. You're going to sleep until dawn. And uh, begin your day. Unfortunately, today is a very rainy day. Oof. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, it is just pounding. Uh, torrential rainfall. Oh man, and that twirls a water type? Super buff. <laughs> it doubles your speed when it's raining. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's only if he has swift swim. My bad. My bad. Damn it. <laughs> um over the course of the night, Guy is going to make Magier's gambling sauce. Okay. Um, which is another word for a modern steak sauce from the 15th century. <laughs> uh, Are you sure you didn't take Cullinancer, like, from the, uh, from Valdez? Because that's, like, a thing now. Like, you could be a... I, I, I know, I know, but no. There's, I, there's I, also I, the, there's also the saucerer. I just know. From Kingdom of Loathing. <laughs> oh, <boy>. Yes. <laughs> saucer. Uh, All right, I got what this up. And he would have asked Orion before he went to bed if it was possible to get some fish or game um, to use tomorrow or today. Oh, between Orion, Claude, and Jert, um, I mean, I'm not, like, if it's, like, a common enough thing, I'm just going to say that you guys can get it in, like, an hour or less. Uh, if it's something that could be naturally hunted or foraged between the three of you, that's, like, the, that's like the dream team right there, so... Yeah, yeah, I think Orion would be on board. Uh, I think he'll also uh, look at Guy and be like, "Sorry if I was rude earlier. I, I kind of just met you, so I don't know if I, I really want to be slathered with uh, spices or anything like that." Oh no, I didn't plan to do it with you. Like I said, someone had suggested your blood, and I was going to drizzle it on the meat. Ah. Like a syrup. So, I, but I made this cameline sauce as a replacement. And I've been sniffing you all night. So. <laughs> oh, what a phrase. And uh, he's going to watch. use prestigitation to try to match that uh, odor of a mousekin. Well, now a drenched you. mousekin. Now a drenched mousekin. Even worse. Uh, <laughs> and he'll make the, the dish smell as though it's that meat instead. There we go. Don't worry. Uh... I don't know who brought up the blood thing, but, um, I wouldn't do that to you. Besides, I need you, otherwise I can't see in the dark. And you'd notice, over the night, or at least in the morning, his eyes are exactly yours. That's freaky. 
I don't know how you see like this. Everything's so small. <laughs> okay. You're very weird, but huh? I kind of like you. Just a guy. Mm. We I was shoot, just uh... thinking that. <laughs> Do you shoot figure gun? <laughs> We should uh, wake everyone else up. This should be a good little meal. And the rain's not too bad. It'll wash into the river. Maybe draw them out. Like blood in the water. Fair enough. How much smaller is Claude when his fur is wet? <laughs> uh, hmm. I had put him at like... Three eight from the shoulder when he's like you know standing normally, probably like three six with everything going uh, wet. Yeah, I mean lions have a lot of bulk and very short fur, oh. so um, they just don't look as majestic when they are wet. Here's a here's a wet lion for reference. Oh wow, their fur is short. Yeah, they have super mm -hmm. short fur. Yeah, but that floofy ass mane is you know kind of hanging in limp ringlets essentially this looks so sad <laughs> yeah say yeah. yeah don't get any headshots for him yeah it's the tigers that like swimming um i don't believe lion lions can swim but i don't think that they like to um i, I honestly male lions don't like to do anything like just being honest so, it's probably the most work claude's ever done in his life is fulfilling this wookie uh life debt All right. I will wake everyone up with a humming song and the smell of breakfast and uh, continue on our way. Right. Um, so do you guys want to head back along the river so that your nature team can, um, you know, fish up or grab some uh, copperback trout? That'd be great. Okay, cool. Yeah, All yeah right. that'd be wise. All right. Yeah, I'll use my... Uh... A5B Ranger things so lets me forage twice as much room. There you go. Alright. Get you two fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys work together and you get uh, a ton uh, of fish. Um, what we'll do is we'll assume that you're automatically going to get two, but give me a survival check with advantage and then that will determine if you get anything else cool uh, while you're doing it. So we're going to use that and then this is with advantage and I can't roll lower than ten. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so with the advantage that you got, you do manage to uh, get a pretty pretty good haul. You find a, uh, a nice clump or, or school. Um, it makes sense this far south um, from the trolls' reported activities. Maybe the fish are, like, hiding here, right, in this, like, smaller um, kind of passage in the, in the water. And um, you actually, with your survival check, view this as a good sign that more than likely the troll is not in this area uh, because of the abundance of fish that you find. Uh, so you do, you do end up fishing up uh, three nice fat uh, copperback trout. Really? Yeah. yeah. Seeing uh... that you were seeing that you were successful, uh, Claude keeps the uh, the one that he got and eats it. So, I mean, <laughs> he, he was only going to provide one if you guys had, had failed, but uh, he was very pleased to see that you guys handled your shit. He just eats his just whole, live, just crunching up the bones. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, he will uh, hand three of them bound up over to uh, Guy. Ah, thank you. He'll take the one, and he's going to hand it over uh, into his pouch and just kind of put it in there, in a pouch. That's going to stink for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to pull out from that spot a knife, handle it dexterously, and then, like, uh, almost... A, you know, masters of contender begin to cut and like take the scales off while walking with you guys and uh, get enough meat to put in the dish with the sauce and the mouse can uh, the weather favored us today fish are more active in the rain this is quite nice mm. all right uh, you guys make it back to the ferry crossing um, we'll say that stopping for the fish, um, waking up, getting ready. So it's going to put you guys at about 7.30 in the morning, uh, which means that you got 30 minutes until the ferry comes back by. 
because we established this side uh, runs on the hour, and that side runs uh, on the every hour and a half. So That seems like enough uh, time to maybe go and duck in our heads in one of these close buildings. Yeah. Uh, if I can remember what was what. Let's we have... Let's see here. Warehouse, provisions, and what was the other one? I think that was the brewery. Yeah, yes. the brewery. Yeah. There you go. Um, I was be... wondering if I could get someone to come into the provision store with me for just one moment. Uh, all right, we'll go. Uh, um, I would just poke my head in and ask if they carry ten foot ladders. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> proprietor, uh, Ben Sterrell, um, he looks over at you with a big smile on his face, and he says, uh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I got, Fantastic. I got, I got all kinds of letters. Ten feet, ten feet. Fantastic. As you can see, I'm very small, and uh, I have a space I need to be able to access high shelves. So, uh, I, I, I think it costs a silver, but he can charge me what he, what, what, what would he like for this ladder? Uh, let's see. He, he, uh, he eyes you. He eyes the the ladder. He says, uh. Oh, uh, like one of those fancy folding ones that they got out on the coast. Uh, it's just gonna be this big all the time. You sure a little, a little fella like you can uh, can handle this kind of thing, right? Or are you gonna have your friends carry the the ladder for you? Oh no no, I have a plan. Trust me, I can carry. I can take. Oh, you know, I'm be, I'm being so rude. Uh, whatever you need the ladder for, that's your business. I don't mean to pry. How much for it? Uh, yeah, you can uh, take it for one silver. All right, very good. And uh, at that point, I turned to Orion. Came with me, I think. I'd say, yep, um, too small. If, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna need you to carry me for a little while. And I, I grab onto the ladder, and then you see, uh, you see Barnabas disappear into his ring with the ladder, and the uh, the ring kind of like clamors to the ground in front of you. All right. Uh, ben Sterrell uh, lets out sort of a whistle and says, uh, well, if that don't beat all, he just disappeared. Adventures. Huh. I've never seen this before, but uh, okay then. All right. Uh, does, do you have your, do you have your lion in the shop or should you leave him outside? Uh, outside. Okay, okay. Like outside the doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess he would kind of notice that. He just shakes his head. Adventures. Ugh. Wow. Uh, well, do we have if, uh, if you ever need anything, any supplies, uh, I'm definitely the shop for you. Remember, uh, Sarah's provisioning. We've got everything you need, mostly. Do you have extra arrows? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I should have some arrows. Um, also, I do have a boat for sale, if you plan on using the river. Oh, and I came into possession of uh, two fine riding horses that I'm looking to, uh, to sell. Now, 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 I know, I know, there's other places you could be getting your, uh, your horses from, but, uh, I'll give you a cut rate on these. Hmm. I think you'll think for a second. Mm. I may have to confer with the rest of the group. Uh, hold that thought. Uh, he'll run outside. <laughs> pretty much relay that to the group and see what they think. Okay. Yeah, George kind of leaning up against uh, the ferry railing, like waiting. And he just nods and says, I mean, a boat could be useful. Thalen, um, with his arms crossed, just staring at the waters. A horse could be useful, but considering we'll be in um, watery terrains, maybe not so much. Don't get me wrong, I would love to have a horse and ride one. Also, I heard that uh, from the DM that there's not uh, a lot of sea sailing here, so why don't we just take that <laughs> I mean, technically, you could <laughs> use, there's a river, if you look at the regional map, there is a big ass river. Um, so that would actually, I mean, a boat's not the most, the worst thing for getting around. All right, guys, let's drop the main line. We're just going to become river pirates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you hear shouting from inside the ring. If we're fighting the troll from the boat, we've already lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair point. 
So no on the on the boat and no on the horses. Got it. I mean, no on the horses for now. Well, yeah, I still want a horse though. Okay, we'll revisit the horse, but not not right Buy now. Buy one when we've you when you've made your fortune from the troll. So I'm assuming you guys are sort of huddled on the front porch, essentially, uh, the covered like front porch area of the shop, uh, having this hero huddle. I'm of course. Pro horse. Okay. Uh, people are coming and going, uh, giving Claude the White Lion a wide berth, uh, and just, you know, normal early morning um, trade and barter and, and things like that. Uh, I think Orion will run back into his shop and pretty much relay uh, TBD on on the boat. And the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, he, uh, ben, ben lets you know that uh, I can't make any promises. It's cut rate, uh, so they might not be here later. But you have a great day there, little one. Oh, arrows. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, you just purchase them at the normal cost. Okay, just purchasing okay. an extra 20. That's it. All right. All right. Uh, so, we're two heroes. Do you just wait until the... Uh... Guy was sticking his head in the brew house. I would go with Guy. Thailand would. Okay, so you're gonna head over to the brew house. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so this is a building occupying the old um, barracks where a small garrison of uh, Restaloran. God, that's such a cool name. Um, Restaloran soldiers uh, formerly guarded uh, the Great Dwarven Bridge. Um, it has now been converted into a brewery. Um, there is a... Uh, it's owned by a half-orc named Gossler. Um, you do not run into Gossler. Instead, you just run into, you know, an employee who's out front uh, smoking and getting ready to start their day. Uh, this is a human man, and he just sort of looks up at you guys approaching, and he says, um, Can I help you? We uh, normally don't have any... Um, tours or anything like that guy uh gets done with the history lesson as he walks in he probably said all that to thanlin in the air um and as he walks inside he'll say uh guard business as you can see and he clings the side of thanlin's shoulder pads yes guard business where but we would like to ask some questions yes standing here the guard Again, the guard. Would like to make uh, some questions to your boss? Uh, wait a minute. Is uh, is Gosler in trouble for something? You know, that's his business. And you'll hear about it soon enough. So don't worry about it. Hmm. Alright, wait here. In the, in the rain. Um, and he, uh, kind of leaves, closes the door, uh, behind him, and you guys wait for about eight minutes or so, and, um, the, the door, um, opens up, and the guy says, uh, well, on account of the rain, uh, Gosler said you should come in, so, I guess oh, come in. Thank you. Wonderful. I'll uh, head inside. Nature bros out here. Just getting soaked. <laughs> Artemis is in the ring. He's fine. <laughs> I'm in my apartment. I'm good. Yeah. So All Guy right. will come in and he's going to look around like a uh, investigator in the way of, mm, he's like he's looking for some crime or something. Make it very obvious. Something's up. That he's, he's looking, looking for. He, he's looking for crime, huh? That's right. That's right. He's looking for <laughs> crime. Guy. Looks all right. Angry. All right. Um, inside it is humid and warm. They have um, fires going, uh, like a little furnace situation. They got the the brewing vats. They, they, all, all that good stuff. Um, all told, there seem to be, um, at least as far as you can see, uh, three employees. Um, they point to a door, uh, um, to the far, let's see, 
looks like the far right of your current location. Um, and as uh, they, they indicate, ah, uh, uh, yeah, he's through that door, if you need to talk to him. Ah, thank you. Very quick, though, have you noticed any strange happenings? Smell, sights? Strange happenings? Uh, let's see. Is everybody inside, or are some people waiting outside? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm actually cool standing out in the rain with the nature bros. I don't know how you guys Aww. Nature bros. Okay. <laughs> I'm at Orion's whim right now. I don't I don't think Claude wants to stand in the rain. I don't know how he feels about that. Yeah, <laughs> he's we probably not as that. happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, oh, he he looks he looks uh, mournfully and longingly over at the warm firelight that is coming out of the windows uh, of the brewery. He just makes a low, sad chirrup uh, in his throat. Um, even though he is a wild animal, the few times that you have let him go into uh, buildings, he is getting a little spoiled on that shit. Orion will relent and be like, as long as you don't cause any trouble, we can, we can go inside. Ah, uh, here comes our sniffer, not troll cat. On that note, on that note, we're gonna stop right there, and we'll take like a five-minute break, so people can get a drink, use the restroom, that kind of thing. Does that work for everybody? Good. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Definitely. Be back in a few. I smell crime. Gruff McClaw. Uh, that's right. I'm gonna try to make this brew as quick as possible. I wanna kill this troll. Heck yeah. Go in there, accuse him of a crime, and then if he retaliates, then we know he's guilty. Um, if he tries to defend himself. That's how this works, right? We could do some quick checks just to see if it's like the uh, infected brewing equipment That's sort what of I thing. Was, yeah. yeah. I'm still in my ring though, so you're gonna have to coax me out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan's coming in, so you'll be there. Yeah. I can, like, hear things that are going on outside of it a little bit, but uh, I, I don't know how the communication works through it. I'm not sure if I oh, can speak out of it. You cannot. Uh, okay. Uh, it's basically like you're in your own little demi plane. Yeah. I figured uh, if it's... So it's just one way hearing. I figured it went both ways, but... It... Unfortunately not. Yeah, uh, bummer. I, uh, I just be quiet when I'm in there. Had that issue in my game because Rally's telepathic bond can't speak through. So. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. I'm big as wheel. Like I said, Thanlin, we're gonna accuse this guy of a crime, and if he retaliates to defend himself, we know he's guilty. Guardway. That's 
not true. <laughs> That's how we handled this. Define we. That's how you handled this. I'm sorry. His no. Yeah, his <laughs> guy's <laughs> eyes changed to Thanlins, and he's just like, I'm a guard now. You Look bitch. At Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but that I admit that ability you have is kind of cool. I oh, totally. <laughs> hey. We'll see. We'll see. I'm planning to use it uh, a lot more um, today with this fight. Hopefully. Cool. Wait. So, so, do you just copy traits, or is it just like very specific? I can copy very specific things from people, um, but they have to be humanoid. But there's another ability that I have that I was trying to coerce um, Layla into doing to me. But I won't uh, get to do that just yet. Okay. <laughs> oh my. Uh, by the way, Ark, you have a fantastic bard voice. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm trying you know, to lay it on a little bit thick, make everybody not like you, but also be like, ah, that's a beautiful. Do you, do you do audiobooks or something? You have a great orator voice. I'm a professional dungeon master. Well, that does it. Yeah. Ah, I was gonna say like radio. Yeah. I should. I should. People tell me all the time. But I need to figure out how to monetize this even more than I am. Make some money off that, my dude. Seriously. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if people. And I live in uh, literal arid desert in the middle of Canada, where there's nothing happening in a small town, so I can't do much. <laughs> you can do uh, start with fiber gigs for. Um, voice acting gigs on Fiverr. And you right. Then, so yeah, get the get the practice, then use the best stuff for a reel. I uh, go from there. I had a voice coach, David Rosenthal, uh, for a bit, and he wanted me to come back, but it was too expensive at the time. All right. Hmm. I thought that I had this map uh, lit, but it is not so we'll, hopefully you don't try to you know kill anybody here but uh, otherwise with the of the minded but it is <laughs> a lovely brewery map by uh tom cardos so i could just put it over here for ambiance for now excellent so turn off the token vision turn off the grid let's see like I said to Fanlin, we're gonna do guard business. We're gonna walk in, we're gonna accuse this guy of a crime, and if he defends himself, then he's guilty. That sounds like every episode of Psych, actually. But, yeah. yeah. We, this. we, we could this. find I... evidence first. Psych. Nah, 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 nah. Evidence, the only evidence we need is his denial. Uh, someone has to be Gus, and they also have to have a ridiculous nickname. Guy. guy that works. Guy. All right. That completely works. Well, I am ready to continue if you guys are ready to continue. Mm -hmm. If everybody's here, let's jump into it. I think Jert's gone, but... Uh, Jert, we've still got Jert and Orion we're waiting for. All right, all right. Uh, okay. I'm back, but for some reason my thing isn't going off AFK. Uh, let's see. It says you've returned, but it didn't get returned. Yeah, it's not going off. That's yeah. weird. Okay. Let me uh destroy your bitty and pull out a new one see if that fixes it. Right no! Oh God! I'm the first casualty yeah. already. Yeah, Damn it, blood. Mr. Guy! <laughs> of course, I, I don't want to the... go. And he just turns into little particles and disappears. Um, of course, it'd be uh, the mouse. Let's see. Tasty. All right. Yeah, that's weird. It was just stuck on your mini. Jerk. Same deal. Are you back or? I think he's still. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Wait, it was... said he returned. <laughs> that was me. That was me testing his stuff. So uh, his oh. mic is still right. on uh, Discord. He's staying outside with Layla, I think. All right, that Unless works. Layla comes in. All right. Uh, so what we'll yeah. do is I'm just vibing yeah. in the rain. <laughs> I'll just use the brewery as a background for us, uh, the brewery map. Um, all right. So they give you a general sense. It's nice. It's a nice little setup. As so. I walk in, if the barrels are right there, can I sniff the air using poisoners kit and smell if something's wrong? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, is everybody able to see? Without You should be able to see it without a token, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I just threw the uh, camera token on there. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, um, yeah, so you guys would actually come in. Uh, 
let's see, probably here is where he would lead you in. And then he would tell you to go through here. And they have like a little, um, you know, like their own little bar, essentially, uh, as their break room slash hangout spot, which is kind of adorable. Um, be the Bennies of working for uh, Gosso's Brew House. Uh, so you understand that Gossler does not in any way compete with the other two inns in town. Um, this is just for like a friends and family and employees kind of situation to have this nice little setup. Um, so Gossler does um, meet you in this uh, this tap room area, and it's still early enough in the day that they're they're still getting started. Um, that nobody's nobody's really built up a sweat or any of that kind of stuff. And he, um, he smiles at all you guys. Uh, and he definitely bears a lot of his um, orc heritage. Um, long ago, there were orcs. They came down from the north. They invaded. Big war. Dwarves had to fight against them. Um, they wanted to get everybody else involved. Uh, they did get the support that they were hoping for. Dwarves' uh, power base got diminished. They basically lost control of the region. So Dwarves is not a huge fan of, of orcs or their half-orc descendants. Um, for the most part, the the humans, halflings, and gnomes, they're pretty chill with everybody. Um, so, you know, they, they give everybody a fair shake and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so Gosler kind of looks at you guys um, from behind the bar, uh, and he says, uh, You with the guard? That's right, he's right here. Uh-huh. Pretty fancy looking for a guard. Oh, isn't he? Guy, stop talking. Hello there. What, my, what um... seems to be the problem? Um, one of, have, what, have one of my employees done something? No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> um, there seems to have been a problem with the brewery um, supplies causing. I caught it behave well, violent behavior. Are you saying you saying people can't hold their their ale? What's the problem? Why does it have to do with me? Oh, I see where this is going. Are you? I didn't think that the guard was in the habit of investigating uh, local businesses. I, I kind of thought Drellin's Ferry was uh, pretty laid back in regards to that sort of behavior. I pay I pay my taxes. That's no, 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 no. Oh, so, sorry, continue. <laughs> That's where I come in. I'm not from Drillin's Ferry, and I know alcohol. And I have to say, I've seen some pretty dangerous fights, and very little alcohol being drunk. So, I wanted to take a look around. If you would let me, I just want to sniff your supplies. I'm not going to steal your recipe. I don't know who you are. Oh, I'm just a guy. Yeah, you're just a guy that shows up. Yeah, so you know me. A guy you're claiming is a guard, and then you're going to try and take a look around my establishment? Well, how do I know you're not just working for a competitor and you're here to steal my secrets? I just said I was a guy. We don't give tours to the public. Well. Also, I haven't done that check to sniff the air or, like, the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and give me a... Um, Poisoner's kit. I would say you could do a perception, but you, you, if you don't have proficiency normally, you could have proficiency because you're specifically sniffing for something wrong in the air. You got All right. It. Um, one thing that you smell a bit more of than what you anticipated is uh, rat urine. It's kind of a very low-key, like ammonia kind of smell of like and. Having grown up in taverns, you know that uh, rats love taverns uh, because they are warm and dry and people are sloppy when they are not at their own home, right? So they, like, drop food and things like that. Um, there's so many people there, so there's, like, lots of chances for, like, scraps and, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah. Also, one of the most popular stories that you, you hear about is such and such adventurer began their career fighting rats in the basement, blah, blah, blah. Um, so rats and taverns kind of go hand in hand, and it's sort of a always clearing them out situation. Rats would definitely be drawn to uh, 
a brewery because of the abundance of different grains and stuff. Ah, you're having a rat problem, are you? Oh, shit. All right, so he, uh, he kind of, like, makes an oh, shit face, and he says, uh, I mean, there's no crime against that either. They're not of unusual size. They're normal rats. Oh, ooh, you must be insight. careful. Insight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me an insight check. Oh, yeah, I don't know the other one. Where does she? Uh, anyone that's outside on Team Nature, um, it's... It's not like Le like Layla. You got an eighteen passive perception. You could see the rats. Like they're like <laughs> they're like peeking out the window, like at the rain. Some of them are like ta like looking down and pointing uh, at Claude. Uh, and there's kind of there's like there's at least three of them that are kind of gathered on the second story window, looking down at you guys. They are not of unusual size. Um, Stanley. <laughs> You determine that he is not lying, they are not of unusual size, but that he is very sensitive about the situation. <laughs> he will he says, not... I was gonna get some cats to take care of it, but, like, I'm allergic, and then we thought, what if we got some snakes? But a couple of people <laughs> didn't... A couple of people didn't vibe well with the idea of having snakes in the workplace. I'm still working it out! What, do, what does my rat problem have to do with people getting drunk? We just wanted to make sure none of your supply was affecting anyone around this area to react in such a violent manner. Uh, fine, fine. What's your name? I'm going to check with the Captain Serana next time I see her. And if I find out that this was a fake deal, I'm going to tell her everything about you. You're very distinctive, the two of you. Very distinctive. So, if you're screwing me over here... There's going to be consequences. No, 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 you misunderstand. I, I'm a well-connected well, man in this community. Clearly you are, sir. Um, I am Thalen Vanderbilt. I am part of the guard and militiamen who helps patrol and keep this neighborhood uh, safe. Yeah, he, he writes this down on a little, like, scratch pad that he keeps. And you, you, who, who are you? Some I'm kind of guy. bard, no doubt. Uh, uh, I'm your guy. Uh, and I'd be careful about your rat talk and you being so sensitive about it. My friend can hear you. And he points out the window to Orion. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Orion, would you be visible on the porch? This is a this is the a covered porch area right here. Uh, yeah, we. Oh, came, damn. Because uh, we came to the porch to get a little bit outside the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Claude. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, now that's a rodent of unusual. Oh, look at the size of that cat. Oh no! Uh, he starts kind of reaching towards his uh, slightly large nose, and uh, kind of starts rubbing it. Uh, you know how people who are allergic to an animal, even if they aren't having allergies, they're psyching themselves out. Uh, yeah. He says, "That's a big, that's a big cat." That's right. So we were prepared to deal with your problem, and we've been noticing strange happenings. Now, a um, rat problem can be dealt with, and it's not a huge issue. But there are things that are happening in the river, and we don't want the water to be tainted. And if it is, it could have happened to your um, supply. So we're going to give a quick look around, if that's all right. You've got all right, there. all right. I'll give you the tour real quick. Okay. Might as well start in the basement. Uh, so he, like, leads you guys down to the basement. It's just full of barrels um, uh, where they would store everything. Uh, it tells you that he keeps uh, the majority of his grain supplies uh, above ground and on the second floor because he doesn't trust, you know, storing them underground because he wants to avoid moisture whenever possible, blah, 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 blah. Um, there are signs of rats down here. Mm. Great. Mm. All right. I, mean, I don't and know what you need to see. There's rats. I'm, I'm dealing with it. I'm gonna. Guy's gonna head over to a little like one of the being made or a water supply if there is one. That he uh huh. Recognize one, and he's yeah. gonna open it and take a snip. Okay. Okay. Um. So you you head over to there's this you know huge tank like wooden tank situation uh where they kind of store the water and the water gets pumped up to the uh main floor and stuff like that. Um. You get like a sample of the water. Uh, go ahead and give me uh, another one of them poisoner kit checks. Oh, man. 
All right. Do you want me to go uh, charisma on it? Or? So, <laughs> charisma on it. No, no, no. This is definitely be like an intelligence thing. Yeah. So get, just do uh, investigation, and we'll add a plus two for proficiency. Excellent. Okay. Uh, as far as you could tell, uh, and you feel pretty confident, there's nothing wrong with the water. Hmm. Could I check his brew? And uh, did Orion follow? Uh, Orion, did you come in, or are you going to wait outside? I was just waiting outside, but if you want him to okay. come in, uh, he'll follow. Yeah. Barnabas! Barnabas! It's a uh, little vibration in your pocket where the ring is and like a little plume of smoke pours out of your pocket and Barnabas appears next to you and puts his hand out for the ring oh geez uh, here thank you very much and uh, wanders off to find Guy he'll follow you alright so uh, I'm just calling for my half <laughs> so, so down in the basement um, it is uh, not overly large because it is very close to the river um, so they, you know, they, they don't want to put too much, uh, they don't want to risk any flooding or anything like that. Um, so it's a small basement. Mostly it's where they store, um, their excess water supplies and, and things like that. Um, it is dank. It is, um, moist, uh, and humid down here. And there is, uh, cause again, the region of the world that you're in has the very like Florida climate to it. Uh, sadly. Um, and there is, uh, there are signs of rats, and as you guys come downstairs, um, did you bring Claude, or did you leave Claude outside? Uh, he's outside. Okay. Um, yeah, the rats kind of, uh, scamper into little hidey holes and whatnot to, uh, avoid you guys. He says, this is really, this is really embarrassing. I, I can't believe the guard's getting involved on this. I... I'm really trying my best to get this sorted out. Y you understand, right? Definitely. Everyone needs help every now and then. Um, how about this? Make a com- If possible, you can make a complaint to perhaps the council for aid in regards to your rodent infestation. Then my whole bit- my business is out! I People aren't going to want to drink anything that comes from my brewery if they find out I got a rat problem? Um, hold on. Would you allow me to... I think I can... He'll just walk over to where he kind of saw the, the rat scurry. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's going to start squeaking. And he's going to use a feature of his. Oh, shit. Natural language where I can pretty much communicate to all any and all beasts or monstrosities. Uh, okay. He's gonna start asking. So simple, why the, the simple. Rats are here. All right, so simple statements, basically. Yep. Okay. Uh, pretty much uh, the twenty questions, like why are you guys here, what's going on, was there a problem that caused you guys to be inside this place? Uh, yeah. So uh, they say uh, back to you. They say, "Oh, great giant, titan among our kind. Uh, we are here." Uh, we are here to spread the influence of our masters. Who's your master? We serve Masters Three. Uh, and they, and the, and the, the ones the speaking for the others, uh, holds up his little hand. Oh, so cute, rats are so fucking cute. Holds up his little hand. He's got, he's got three little fingies held up. Uh, could you tell me where your master is located? Oh, um, yes. Our master prefers to stay by the river. Uh-oh. But our masters, our masters send us to the places where the people drink to spread their influence. They uh, have given uh. us great gifts. Wherever we pee, -pee we leave behind <laughs> the lingering magic of the fame. Oh, God. <laughs> and then to demonstrate, he, to demonstrate, he just urinates. Oh no! Gossler says, what, what, "What is even happening here? What's happening over there?" No, They're no, it's territorial. It's territorial. It's territorial. Yep, yep. Is, is he gonna pee too? I see he's Donald ducking it over there. Right? Jerk! Oh my God! <laughs> I Jerk! Mean, 
he, he's not wrong. This whole time, yeah. Orion does not uh, have pants. So Jer yeah. hears, <laughs> hears his name get yelled, and he breaks into a dead sprint, like with a a stare at Layla, and he just runs in, breaks okay. down the door, axe in hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's no reason to break down the door. Some of the employees say hey, they're just downstairs. It's fine. Yeah, no, he runs. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Hearing yeah, the sorry. Sound, uh, uh, hearing the sounds of Jesus. like big angry people and yelling, the rats scatter. Oh, thank you, Jerk. Thank you. Yeah, he runs in, axe in hand, and like, where's the threat? You got it. Uh, Orion, is everything okay? Uh, I'll save you. Yeah. So, and he will retell pretty much what the rats told him. Um, this being a little bit more of, well, they mentioned uh, their masters from the Fey, so I don't know if, if Jert would have like some innate uh, idea of, of that. I don't know if Ryan does. Oh yeah, his eyes go wide. Jert, uh, I will, uh, yeah, give me a knowledge nature or knowledge history, uh, okay. both of which would be intelligence based. Okay. Could I give? And you remember, in Foundry, you can click on your stat next to your skill and actually swap it out um, before, before okay. you roll. May I guidance myself for this? Can uh, I give yeah, him sure. advantage because I'm in proficient in nature? Alright, yeah, go for it. And really quick, can I help Jert? Can you help Jert? He's already got advantage and guidance. So... Oh, if he's already got advantage, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but as a bard, being proficient in all skills, you can always assist uh, because that counts as being trained. You can always assist. Yep. Uh, Jert, Based on the fact that people are getting drunk, uh, there's rats involved. Oh, God. Yeah, they're pissing in the, in the supply, aren't they? Um, well, it's not so much that they're pissing in the supply. Uh, the, uh, you, you do, like, the whole, like, ranger thing, right? You go to the fresh rat pee, you put you put a fingy in there, you, you rub it between your, your thumb and your fingy, you give it a little taste. Yeah. Um, it's definitely fey magic. And if, uh, as you kind of rack your brain thinking about what kind of fey creature could do this, um, it's probably rum gremlins. What? They are a type of fey creature that can, um, cause drunkenness and enhance the effect of, uh, alcohol and drunkenness. They are creatures of, uh, chaos who, um, seek nothing greater in life than to watch uh, communities tear themselves apart uh, through rampant alcoholism and drunkenness. Uh, they are the most happy when people are at their worst uh, from drinking. And what do they generally look like? If, I, if you would know, I don't know. Uh, they generally look like short um, men and women, barely wearing any clothes, um, long, longish toes and fingers that end in longish claws, Okay, so they're very easy to pick out from a crowd. Um, yeah, long carrot noses, um, big triangular-shaped ears, um, greenish, brownish skin. The, yeah, they don't look like anything that would be living in this town. Yeah, so Jert stands up, and uh, with a stoic gaze, he just says, Love Rivets. And he's going to cast Exposition at level 1, and just repeat that all to the party. Okay. Very nice. Exposition level 1. Good shit, good shit. All right, so you can uh, relay all that information to the rest of the party. Um, do you do this in front of Gosler? Um, is did he come down to the basement with us? Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's not leaving you guys unattended. In his um, elsewhere. I don't see a reason not to tell him unless you guys do. He says, "Rum gr gremlin? What? What is that? What is a rum gremlin?" I mean, you just said what it was, Ca but I mean, Ca careful, <laughs> don't say the name. You'll bring more of them. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. They work oh. mysterious ways. What am I supposed to do about this? I mean, it sounds like you need a team of adventurers, and he looks to Guy pointedly. Do you have coin? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got coin. Are you sure this isn't a setup? I mean, smell the pee. Like one. <laughs> yeah. Smell the pee. Taste uh, it, just like Jared did. You can all right, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need uh, persuasion or deception. This man is not going to get on his knees. And no, his he's not. Uh, I'd like to guide him. Would, would, All right. Could I give advantage to this because All this right. is what the rats have told us. Okay, so you guys all pressure this man 
uh, and he uh, he kneels down. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Thalen's not involved in this. And he dips his he dips his fingy in the fresh rat pee, <laughs> and just like the ranger did, he wipe it between his fingy, and he touches it to his tongue, and he goes, Ugh! Ugh! Yes, yes, you see, that is what you have to look forward to. If you keep saying the name. I mean, uh, you can either pay someone to purify your drink every single day for the rest of your business's existence, or just pay someone to off the rumblings. All right. Well, you seem to know a lot about these things. Uh, how how many of them are there, and, and how how are you gonna? I mean, I want proof of the deed. Sounds like three. Is that not um all right? Uh, yeah. They they mentioned three. Oh, this is ridiculous. I haven't. I never had to hire adventurers in my whole life. What am I? I don't, I don't even know how much to, uh, the, to pay you guys. A thousand gold. <laughs> and traveling brewer's tools. He, he <laughs> takes he takes psychic damage from the amount of money <laughs> you have demanded from him. Alan will. I will. But but. Sorry. Go ahead. But for you, dear sir, we can do a discount. You let us have a tour, and that's worth. What, 700 gold in the top? Uh huh. And perhaps, you know, my friend here needs brewer's supplies to go on the on the way. I see and where you're going. All maybe right. if we could taste a bit of your recipe and get some help around. You're well integrated into this community. If we help you, well, whatever coin you can spare would be perfect. And the rest of it, you can do a favor. Alright, how's this sound? Mm. Alright. I'll give you 50 per head for these uh, things. And if you bring me all three, I'll throw another hundred gold on top and the brewer's tools and a lesson about brew. Heck yeah. And I'll put in a good word with the rest of the community that you are the kind of people that get things done. Guy will copy his um, mannerism to do a firm handshake and fold out his hand. All right, all right, since that's a good handshake. He nods. All right, what do I do in the meantime? He turns to Jert and Orion. Hmm. Short of the purified food and drink spell, would Jert know of any way he could help him reduce the effect of this? Oof, getting rid of the rats. Well, yeah. Uh, I, mean, he, I was he's... considering poison, but I don't want any poison to accidentally get in the food, you know? Or, or the, the, the yeah. drink. Uh just heard... yesterday. Hmm? After you, after you. Oh, no, I was just thinking to myself, just yesterday I had the spells for this. <sighs> I, uh, um, I've heard that if you coat a cotton ball in peanut butter, they'll eat it and choke on it. Hmm. That's a little fucked up. The guy looks at, guy looks at Orion like, oof. Yeah, I think there's a slight grim face on the <laughs> They also I mean, hate. Oh, oh, oh Ryan! I, I honestly, plants. though, honestly, as a mouse skin, I feel like that's something your parents would warn you about. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Don't trust just peanut butter lying around. Yeah. Oh, it's like God. one of the first things they teach mouseling children is like never eat any food you find that you didn't know where it came from. If you didn't hunt it or you didn't forage it, don't fucking take it. <laughs> All right, he uh, he writes it down in his scratch book. He says, "Uh, well, that's dark, but you know what?" And if we, we, got, go the we got him so and... desperate, we're stomping him with our boots. We're doing whatever we can to get rid of him. You could go into the forest and get some mint leaves. I think they hate those. Mint leaves? Um, what if that messes with the aroma of the, the stuff, though? I don't really want to bring mint leaves in here. Ah, what is brew sounds out? great. Peanut butter. That sounds expensive, but... Uh... I'll check at the sundry store, see if they got any of these cotton balls and peanut butter. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, we have a plan. We have a business arrangement. All right. We'll take uh, care of it for you. We're your guy, and we're the claw, uh, claw, claw of the veil. The claws of the veil. Cl claw. Is... Is just one claw? Claws. What? Just, just, claws. Just claws. Just claws. Yeah, I think, I think, claws. I think in, in Multiple. practice, yes, definitely, yeah. Are you are you the claw or are you the claws? Claws. Claws, claws yes. Claws, claws of the veil. Okay. Oh, all right. Wow. You know when you first showed up, <laughs> I, I, I really Sorry. I really wanted to punch you in the face, but oh, uh, yeah. n now uh, I feel I feel a lot better about this. I feel like I can see a light at the end of this dark, stinky tunnel. 
It smells like pig rat urine, doesn't it? Yeah, all right, here's the deal. If this is actually causing harm to the people of the town, and, and God's hope, no one else, uh, we're gonna shut down production, and I'm gonna have everybody still work their normal hours. We're gonna go, we're just gonna go rat hunting. We're gonna get every rat we can. But, uh, you know what? I thought we were taking enough precautions, but if people are getting hurt, I don't want to put out that kind of product. I'll take the loss if it means keeping our community safe. It might be possible to purify your product of that poison. Uh, the only cleric in town is uh, Brother Dirty. I don't want to burden him for something like this. I think it's magic coming from the urine is true tasted. So, yeah. if we get rid of the masters, it will cut off immediately. Okay. And so let us handle that. Once we bring him the, you the heads, then it's all good. Everybody can drink and have a merry time. To be fair, there's still rat urine in it, even if we get rid of the magic. Yeah, yeah. So you should. Yeah. I don't think there's any rat urine in the brew. I think that the rats are urinating in the building, and that's causing. Can you the magic. recommend uh, an animal that I could keep on the premises that would scare away rats, but also not be a cat allergen? Owls. Owl. No, they shit everywhere. That's <laughs> gross. Better that than rat. Do, do they well. shit? I, all things hit shit. They, I think they throw up more than anything. All right, well, owls. Where do I even get owls from? Hmm. Give me a lot to think about. All Might right. I want to go talk to the druids. It's going to be a long day. All right. And uh, you guys head out? Fairy. Okay. Hopefully we didn't catch it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That did yeah. take some time. All right. L um, literally the second we're out that door i mean yeah. second we're out the door i was like yeah so probably the other the other places probably have this issue too we should probably check on them at some point i wouldn't I'm, be surprised if it's just this guy in stock and I, the, right. the fairy is pulling away as you guys are running up to the uh the thing um oh do you do the dramatic like leap onto the the fairy as it's pulling away kind of, kind of deal <laughs> i leap oh, onto yeah. claude yeah. and then claude okay. leaps onto the fairy <laughs> all right all right um, okay. Uh, they still ask you for your one silver apiece. Uh, except for Thanlin, who, you know, gotta take care of them cops. You gotta take care of the cops. All right. Guy would like to get his way out of it. <laughs> was it lesson. one silver right. or was it three silver for me and uh, Claude? Because Claude was so big and an animal, he would be three silver. Okay, I figured. And, alright. Uh, you guys cross... All right. Uh, it is still rainy. Uh, it's about 8.30-ish in the morning. What do you do now? Right. We got the meat. We also know that there is now three new creatures by there. I assume each of the three are polluting the three areas. We have the brewery, we have the old bridge inn, and we have the apple. I assume each of them are infecting the area with their magic. That's why there's three. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Apple. Maybe each uh, tavern owner or business representative would be willing to pay us for solving this problem. I agree, but I don't want to take money from the apple. We're to getting money from the bridge. I think the most immediate threat is control. And we're all prepared to deal with that today, so... Correct. Also, Layla, I heard what you said about the mint drink this is extremely important. Remind me later to make you a banshee's bread. Anyways, troll, deadly, dangerous, we should deal with that too. There's also, um, thing happening by the... The, 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 what was it again? With the dancing, um... Oh, yeah, I have the quest. Yeah, there's, uh... The uh, dancing remains in the cemetery? Yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah, there's some missing farmhands, and there's eroded tracks and some dancing undead. So, let's... So far, we're not properly equipped to deal with the troll as of yet. But we can deal with these smaller objectives. I think we can take on the troll. Yeah, yeah we right. have fire and ice magic now, right? Mm -hmm. We rested. We've got what we need. Unless you need something else, then, then. <gasps> Perhaps it's the word of the captain. We're going for the troll right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Do you need something to swing at? 
All right, so you guys are going <laughs> to get uh, going to the troll. How how best to do this? What is the situation? How are you proceeding? Oh wait, hold on. Um, were you supposed to go see the wizard? Um, you might have information that we can ask about. Yeah, head up that yeah. direction. That's true. I, he I, is a dick. Was there something I, particular we need to ask him for? I feel like he's going to tell us we need alchemist fire. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to probably is. try to sell us it and put us in debt to him. Wizards are not a trustworthy so but Wizards I, suck. I've already put myself in debt to someone today, so uh, or yesterday, so definitely not looking to do double down on that. I think if you all are confident in tracking down the troll's lair, and I have the perfect dish that tastes just like Orion, we'll be able to draw to it. Uh, well, if you say so. I just, I like to be precautious and, you know, make sure we have all the, ne the necessities to deal with this. I'm I open to going to the wizard. It's, it couldn't hurt. I agree with Adam, but I think we've taken quite a lot of precaution already. In that case, let's kill a troll then. Hell yeah. Alright, so you guys head towards... I guess we'll go coastline towards the old bridge, right? We can okay. check one side of the coast that way, because that was one of the potential areas. But I think it's uh -huh. sounded, it sounded like the old bridge was the best area. Alright, now, <laughs> according to... Um, <clears throat> according to Kellen's daughter, the most beautiful and wonderful person in the whole world, um, his pride and joy, the apple of his eye... Um, she and her friends were having a party, like a picnic cookout kind of thing, uh, along the uh, coast, right where the pylons would be. So it's actually pretty close to where you currently are. Perfect. All right. Go there and I can stop trying to Hanging out under a bridge downtown. It sounds like they were smoking reefers and not having a picnic. Uh, the half, the halfling weed is, or you know, I mean, uh, it. Yeah, that's probably exactly what they were doing. Um, all right. Takes one you know, to know one. Rowdy teenager things. Rowdy teenager things. Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, using super nature team. Um, you guys. Uh, not only find the spot in the torrential downpour, um, but you see that there are uh, three river goals, and they are huddled together um, on the rocks, and they seem to be having a discussion amongst themselves uh, as you approach. They do look over at Claude, though, and they are ready to fly away at a moment's notice. Um, let's see, Jert, you do find the remains of a cook fire. Uh, it's it's basically a dugout fire pit, so you get the sense that this is sort of a local hangout spot for youth. Um, like, you know, it's just everybody knows, like, hey, let's go down to the pylon kind of thing. Uh, you do see some discarded um, alcohol containers. Um, Thanlin, there's a lot of laws being broken here. A lot of laws. So, not really, just probably littering. Um... But yeah, it's raining like crazy, so let me put some rain on here. How dare they loot her. Yeah. <laughs> even even I didn't rain. know how, how hard of a cop you wanted to go with this character, but... <laughs> if they're glass bottles, <laughs> I would pick them up. Glass bottles are like a gold apiece in this world. Oh, yeah, fair, fair. Uh, Jared's going to try to go through. He's going to crash down to the mud and make an uh, advantage survival check. To okay. try to find uh, any kind of remnants of tracks or evidence of a, a river troll or anything consistent with that. Okay. Uh, All right, we'll darken things up just a little bit for you. All right, I am gonna yeah gonna need them checks because the over. rain is gonna cause some disadvantage here. Okay, so it's a straight roll for me, and I can't roll. Over yeah. Time. Okay. Can I give guidance? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, he ar he already rolled it, but oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um. But it's all good. He, uh, as you look around, uh, you do find um, the there are there is remnants of of troll uh, in the area. Uh, you can see scrapes on the stones uh, that were left by the heavy muscled feet and claws of the creature as it climbed up the rocky uh, bank of the river. 
uh, onto the shore. All signs of footprints long since washed away, but you do you are confident that a troll left those scrapings on the rocks. Okay. Uh, would this allow me to track the creature? Um, absolutely not, because the creature yeah. went back into a river. And yeah, it's, so yeah. I would have been caught by yeah. now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, it was definitely him. I can't tell by what's happened. Jared, can you pick out a perfect spot for me to put down the dish? The, the, I call it the Orion, uh, not Orion. Uh, I'll look for the mo biggest collection of the tracks and evidence to see if there's maybe an area it likes to regularly pass when it comes in and out of the water. Oh, nice. Um, you do see that uh, pretty much right over here is the most markings of trolls that you've uh, troll activity that you have seen. So it, it probably found this to be an easy way to get in and out. And based on the amount of marks, it seems like the creature has been checking in on this area. Mm. Maybe because it saw Tasty Halflings there uh, the other night, and it's been coming back to see if Tasty Halflings are still available. Yeah, he nods uh, lonely at Guy and points there. Guy is going to make his way over, and if he can help get some help, it'd be perfect, but he's just going to set up a little bundle right here. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's the meat, the sauce, the mouse skin, uh, magic to make it smell like it and uh, he's then going to look over at Orion while he's not looking and uh, he's going to match Orion's mannerisms one more time kind of sniff the air and he's going to add a little bit more salt and then he and then kind of put it there I think Layla's going to use the time that that's going on to try to look for a good maybe vantage point that they could hide Not All sure right. what creatures okay. are over here, but the Ryan would kind of speak with them just to try and get a little bit more information. Uh, they are they are river gulls, and as you approach, you hear them having a very, uh, very stressful conversation. There's no more fish. No more fish. No fish. No fish. No fish. No fish. Uh, and they look over and they see you, and they start to like kind of move their heads around, and they uh, they all start going meat. Meat, 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 meat. Uh, as they uh, they stare at you hungrily. Uh, first off, I can hear what you're saying. Second off, you don't want to mess with me, and he'll just point towards the big cat. Mm. Uh, they prepare to leave. Uh, but uh -huh. have you seen a troll, big, greenish thingy, walking? Ah, around ah, here? ah, big thing. Ah. Big thing in the water, eat all the fish. How often does it come here? Hmm. This favorite rock. Uh, we come here, get snacks left over by peoples. When was the last Big time thing. you saw it? Big thing come... Uh, last night? Hmm. Well, thanks for your help. They all stare at you? No food? Uh, he'll rustle through his pack and will produce, like, a ration for them to pack uh -huh. at. Okay. Uh, yeah, they begin to bel belligerently kick the shit out of each other. Uh, screaming mine over and over again. Uh, it falls down the rocks and makes a clump, uh, plunk kind of sound into the water. And they all look very sad. They turn back to you. Food? <laughs> There's just two dots in the line on his face right now, mm -hmm. but he will produce a second ration. He okay. will put it more inside the, uh, towards the rocks so it won't uh -huh. fall off. Okay. And he'll be like, all right, that's the last one. All right. With the with food trapped uh, against the rocks, they just begin to kick the shit out of each other, fighting over the, the ration. Eventually... They, they're going to fly away. Oh, I can God. only imagine them taking off with you. <laughs> Just flying in the air. <laughs> it just occurs to me it's a thing to happen. Claude just watches you go, and in, like he makes like a long roar, and then it says, I failed in the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um... Now, the rain is unfortunately kind of dampening the aroma, right, that you're trying to get to kind of go passing. 
Well, uh, I, I will say, since it's in the river, it wouldn't be able to smell anyways. So he's mm. putting it in a spot where the sauce and all that would leak down with the spice. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Wash into the river. All right. So, Orion, you have intel. Do you let the others know, or do you yeah. keep your animal facts to yourself? Uh, I come back and I relay okay. all that information. All right. So you know that the creature was spotted here last night by three reliable witnesses. One of them was disgusting. Anyways. Um, you see a crab begin making its way. This crab's the rivers, by the way. I didn't Google it. I live I live on a river. Um, this crab comes up, and he is following the trail of juices towards the plate. Ah, perfect. Snatch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me a slate of hand against this dude's fucking sick acrobatics. <laughs> oh shit, that's pretty good. Oh no, oh, he no. was he was caught unawares. Um Alright. Uh Do I just you hear screaming in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hear the crap, unhand me <laughs> And it begins yeah. pinch it begins pinching at you. Guy ah, will flip him over, ooh. pull out a dagger, and ah. uh... Here, take that Oh my god. This is so dead. messed up. God no. Okay, you take out a dagger, and then you execute him? Uh, if unless Orion stops him. He's gonna... No, he doesn't. All okay. Right. Just stab him in the gullet, and then, uh... May, may, I, see that, may I see that attack? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. He does have an armored hide. Six piercing damage? Oh, uh, he's dead, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Guy will kind of, like, flip him over the side, put him in his cooking utensils kit, and then... Oh uh, <laughs> call it a day. <laughs> Like no you fun. said, no. you, you collect food on all like uh, gooks utensils, you know. Who needs who needs crab cages? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much blood from that oh one guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking bloodbath over here. Uh, guy, Look for red-handed doom. I set the violence level to ten out of ten because of what happened last time. So I don't know. All yeah, right. Uh... Jert's gonna Homer Simpson into the bush over here and stealth while he waits. <laughs> all right, you're gonna wait all day. Is this like uh, a is this a stakeout? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, a stakeout, but the steak in this case is mouse skin flavored. <laughs> Damn. Balin would hide in a bush too. Okay. Oh, hi, Orion. I can recognize your scent now because I replicated it for food. You smell pretty tasty. Though. So that's for you got you guys are so heroic that you're going to wait all day in this downpour um, for uh, for the for the troll to show up in the evening. I'm down for it. All right. Oh my god. The, Ultimate the stakeout. Only show up in the evening. <laughs> we could yeah, go to the that. bar and like let them know. I'm hoping the aroma will bring them out. Early. Okay. Um. But I do have presentation to dry off everybody every once in a while, and so I'll do that. <laughs> Make it bearable. All right. Anybody that has had to do a stakeout or something similar, I guess, you know, waiting for a new iPhone or some shit, you know, where you're in the little line outside of the store. Imagine doing that without a cell phone. That's where your guys are at. Your Obviously, what one of you's having a great time, uh, a Mr. Benoit. Um, because he's in his apartment right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming, right? I think I came out in the brewery. I don't think I can talk outside of the ring. Oh, okay. So, be honest. How many hours pass of you being soaked in the rain before you go hang out with your sexy genie in your, uh, yeah. in your, your sweet-ass apartment? Um, no, I actually, because I used it earlier, uh, to get the ladder, I can't yeah. use it again until a long rest it happens. Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> That's the worst. That's gonna be the worst feeling in the world. Thalen would be used to stakeouts like these because he's a guard and he takes his job very seriously. All right, all right. Guy is going to sing everyone a song, but he'll hum it oh. so not to dissuade everyone. Yeah, he only goes through ADHD withdrawals of like braiding twigs for a while, and then like uh, circle dancing in the rain, and then like half napping against a rock. It's a lot. It's a lot. All right. Sure, it takes out a small piece of his uh, bedroll and uh, takes the, the cloth part out of it and it's going to use that as a small cover and then he's just going to crouch with his axe in his hand and deadpan stare at the at the hill for six hours. 
for how long. <laughs> oh my god, it's great. <laughs> All right. At one point, you do see gulls circling overhead. They are, they are shouting, and you can hear them, um, Orion. Uh, give me that food! Give it! Give me that food! I want it! Give it! Give me that food! No, it's not for you. Back away. Uh, so they're, yeah, they're way up in the air. I guess you could shoot them down if you wanted to. But this continues for another hour and a half. Um, you guys just hear gull sounds. <laughs> but you, blessed with the ability to understand fucking animals, uh, you have to listen to them. Just <laughs> screaming. Give me the food! Food! Uh, Give it! Give it! For 90 <laughs> minutes. For 90 minutes. Claude has his paws over his ears, and he's like, his head is just buried in, like, the, the bushes. And he just... When I saw this ability, I knew you were going to punish me for it. I've, oh. I've, I've, I've seen your other games. That's fine. It's fun to talk to animals. What are you talking about? It's great. Oh, can you not uh, turn it off either? Is it like, always on? Uh, I think it's just always on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Claude. I think Orion will fire a warning shot to be like, it's not for you. Back off. Okay, give me an attack roll. Is this a shot to intentionally miss? Right. Yes, intentionally miss. Okay. Warning shot. All right, in that case, if you... Uh, make the attack, you don't hit them, but if you miss the attack, you do hit them. Because you're trying to get so close, but just not close enough. Uh, this is a short bow? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. Alright, hey, it, it's a disadvantage because they're way up in the air. Um, I don't know if they'd be 80 feet up, though. They want to be able to smell it, and they want you to hear their demands. So yeah, you take one wing feather out perfectly, and they all go, oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! And they uh they fly away. All right, the longest day continues. It's Thank 12, you. It's twelve thirty in the afternoon. I think it was more for my sake than anything. All There's right, a it's one in the Fainly, afternoon. Bailey will turn to Orion like, "What do the birds do to you?" <laughs> it's two in the they afternoon. They know what they did. Man, we got um, so, so much the, done today. The warm, moist Florida climate has already made your dish rancid. Um, yeah, uh, it rancid is donkey. It is so bad. All right. I'll start singing in Sylvan. All right, four o'clock in the afternoon. George's gonna make uh, a Five small. In the afternoon. Uh, Are we not able to get a bandage. long rest because? Oh, sorry. And he's gonna put a little bit of soil on it and then stuff it into his nose so he doesn't have to smell that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair. Um, it is, you get one long rest a day in my right. games. Um, right. You could take it now if you wanted, but then you wouldn't be able to take it until the next day, basically. Like, right. I'm yeah, good. Yeah. All right. Um, sun's, sun's starting to set. All right. Wish I was Around. In the workshop. This one weird entry party. <laughs> All right, around 6 p.m., they come oh, yeah, for yeah. you. Uh -huh. They come. They come for the treats that you have set out. It's dark. All right. right. Yes. Uh, three rats are making their way along. Uh, how good? How good are the stealth is everybody? Am I using your passive stealth? Not great. Oh my what god. Um, I, I, <laughs> I would like. I, Man, I like your passive stealth is painful. I like to. I would yeah. like to say you would actively try to stealth. Okay. All right. Give me your yeah. Give me your give me your stealth checks. I guess to see if these rats notice you guys. And because and, of my um, armor training, I'm not disadvantaged for it. Genuine question. Do we pretty much guaranteed to know they'd come at sunset or later? Um, I mean, based on the three stunning eyewitnesses that you spoke with, it may have worn off, and I'm cool with you saying if it has. Uh huh. Um, I think once we got to sunsetting, she uh -huh. would have went ahead to make sure their ambush is okay. Done, pass without trace. If it's worn off by now, that's up to you. Okay. Um, it's just now sunset so pass without trace lasts for an hour yeah said she okay. probably would have done okay. it as soon as the sun was set I don't know if it's okay. like night or what so that gives but... a plus 10 to all these terrible checks all right um oh, can you populate <laughs> pass without trace for me sure just before we get 
you know, too far into this and making rolls. That way it can be yeah. used. There you go. Um, you got it already? Yeah. You just be able to click that. Um, you can populate just about anything when you have a cursor in chat. If you hit, I believe it's control space is the default hotkeys for quick insert. And then you can search for the thing that you need, and then it'll yep. populate a link in chat. Space? Oh, uh, is this... Yeah, it's like a searchable Whoa. database. Yeah. I don't know if Founder can do this. Do you mind me asking what, that, uh, what it looks like when you do it? Um, alright, sure. I feel like in this situation, um, since we're kind of in, in the waiting and everything, uh, it's probably like uh, once we've kind of gotten past the, the daytime and, and, and the um, inertia of going, is it going to come or not? And then realizing, oh god, we're going to be stuck here all day. Um, she kind of gets to a focus once the sun starts setting, and I kind of imagine with the rain pouring down, kind of she like localizes it a little on us, and like the brush kind of grows up around us some, and like the leaves kind of like, I don't know, like swirling a little bit in the wind and rain to kind of like obscure us. Uh, Guy watches you intently, and when you do this and it takes effect, Guy is going to copy and learn password choice. Forever? Oh, yep, until I get rid of it. Nice. Uh, and he'll watch you, and uh, he'll take note to do that in the future. All right, with your bonuses, um, even with the plus 10 bonus, um, they detect uh, a few of you, and uh, overall they're going to chicken out. They, as delicious as that food <laughs> smells, uh, they are going to run away. So anyone want to play I Spy? All right. Um, time passes. Ten minutes. It's the bridge minutes, again. Thirty minutes. Forty minutes. And jerks, uh, you see something moving through the water. Even though it is very dark. Um, you can see its massive form moving towards the shoreline. Uh, shit. This creature is 15 feet tall. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> How are we getting this thing back to Jarrett's? And you see it, um, you see it begin to, um, rise up out of the water. Oh, goodness. Oh, damn. We can run away, guys. Remember that. Um, now, it it has keen smell. Um, and it smells them sweet meats. Uh, but that also means that it may or may not be aware of some of you who are poorly hiding, even with a plus 10. And that's exactly what it's hoping for. Uh, Alright, so, Jert. Um, this would probably be the time for initiative um so based on this thing's passive uh perception score uh which is enhanced by its keen smell um and then based on the checks i'm gonna say that uh guy and jerk and yeah, that looks like it. So, Guy and Jert, you guys are going to get... Uh, let's see, what about Ryan? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, Guy, Jert, Orion, and Claude, you guys will get a surprise round. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, so, surprise oh. work is a little weird with uh, active initiative. So, how I run... Um, how I run that is if you have not acted yet or been passed to yet you are still surprise status the secret status effect of 5e uh meaning the first attack against you is at advantage and you cannot make 
uh, any reactions while you are in surprise status. Um, the troll will also be in surprise status, so the first attack against the troll will be at advantage, and the troll will have, um, uh, not be able to make reactions. Uh, once, uh, that first round is over, everyone will have been passed to, everyone's aware of the fight, and then we start second round as if the fight is the real fight and everything's normal. Um, but it's very, very useful in, um, active initiative for one of you to win the initiative during a surprise round, because even if all seven of you had been surprised, one of you winning initiative could have been like, oh shit, and then passed to the other people so that they would lose the surprise status. They wouldn't get to take their turn, but they'd lose their surprise status, and then, um, you know, the, the, the surprising creature would still get its full turn or whatever, but at least you would have shut down, um, the surprise status. Does that make sense? A little bit? Yeah. No, okay. So it yeah. might be best not to hurt it and pass to our allies. It'd probably be guys. guys probably be good first, to get everybody in position. All right, yeah. so Claude shares initiative with Orion. Correct. All right, so let me add you guys to the initiative tracker. There we go. I'm losing yeah, back here over. Here we go, boys. <laughs> all right. And we all have to roll some initiatives. So um, if you go to the little sword, that is for the combat. And then you can go ahead and roll your initiative. Uh, rolling that sweet lake troll. You got a 16. That ain't bad, but it looks like you guys beat him in initiative, which is very good for you. All right. So we just need a initiative from Jerk, and then we're good to go. Yeah, I'm trying to click the combat status thing. It's not to... No, 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 no. Just go to the little sword on the right-hand side. I've already added you to the oh. initiative tracker. Yeah, on the menu, click on sword. Go down to your dude, and this should be there. Um, you should be able to click on the little die there next to your picture. There you go. All right. Cool. I'm going to grab some Muzaks. Nice roll. Holy shit. 21. Remember, guys, we have backup characters. <laughs> you, uh, you, have, you have eight points. You have eight points. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> All right. We're going to begin combat. Uh, Layla, you won initiative, but you were surprised. All right, are you ready for this massive surprise turn? She yeah. startles awake. Yeah. Trolls like, here. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. What the shit? And then she slaps Thanlin, and then his surprise turn comes up. <laughs> All right. Thanlin, you're like, oh, there really is a troll. Yeah. So the yeah, the two the two of you, I'm assuming, had maybe nodded off, like like your heads were next to each other or something. Uh, All right. Uh, so, Thanlin, who do you pass to? I pass to, uh... I look over to Jerk, call his name, and not give him a nod. Okay. Uh, Jerk, you're up. Oh, shoot. Okay. This is it, then. Uh, he's gonna step out of the tree line. The game is paused, I cannot... Really oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, now? also, here, I'm gonna draw with marker all over the place. So, uh, where these rocks are... That is essentially the edge of like a, a rocky area, and then that area down to the water is essentially like a sideways vertical climb situation. Uh, so it's it's not like a straight like ninety degree angle, but it is like a steep slope. So There's you would treat incline. all you, yeah incline treat all that as uh, basically difficult terrain unless you wanted to slide down the rocks. Uh, then you could just slide down at no penalty. Uh, but the sliding would, you know, you, you might tumble, you might fall. So if you're not being careful, you can move at normal speed on these rocks. Otherwise, you want to treat it as difficult terrain. Are we allowed to strategize at all? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay, guy I mean, would have been informed. Yeah, you guys have been here for fucking eight or ten hours or something? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, so I assume you came up with some plans. Guy would have informed you that he can make it way easier to deal with the troll and help you guys do better, like, on your swings and stuff. So, uh... Sure, if you wait for him or you know, get ready, either or, he can do his thing. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll pass to you and act after, or or you can pass it back. That way, I can see what you're doing because it might change what I want to do. If you're about to do the same thing as me. Okay. Uh, sure. I will cast Fairy Fire. Uh, yeah, he's gonna. Exactly what I was gonna do. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, He's so gonna, you're you're gonna re you gonna ready an attack action or something? Because uh, you do have to take well, your have turn. To choose yeah, you, okay. you have to do something yeah. on your turn. Yeah. Okay, then I will. I, can, I have a full turn, so I can do action bonus mm -hmm. action. Right? Yeah, you can do your so whole thing. So then, 
We'll do bonus action hunter's target against this guy, as I can see him. Uh, so for the next hour, I have plus one to attacks and then an extra d6 of damage. Hey. Uh, and then my action. You can always get ready to hit him. Yeah, I think that's what I might do. I'm just seeing if there's any other things I can prep, but I think the rest of my stuff is also bonus actions. I have the same term as him basically coming up. Um, yeah, he will just draw his uh, axe and a short sword from his belt. And uh, okay. he is going to prepare to jump out of his stealth uh, if this creature reaches into his range. Okay. Uh, guy will, um, I suppose, if he's ready in action, if he comes close, Guy will inspiration, uh, and what he'll do is he will just, like, whisper a story, or a story will come to mind, Jert, that he was telling while you guys were waiting for eight hours about a troll at some point, and uh, he'll be barkly inspired, and then he's going to ready an action for the uh, troll to come within range of Jert uh, before casting for Um, who do you pass to? I'll pass to Barnabas. All right, Barnabas, you are surprised, so you ah. just kind of. Ah. That's it. That is that all I have? All right, who do you yep. uh, pass to? The troll or Orion? I pass to Orion. All right. Uh, all right. I think so. First things first. Uh, Claude has to roll for ferocity. I haven't seen this class yet. So All right, companions. Well, well, if a companion isn't incapacitated at the start of their caregiver's turn, the ferocity increases by one d4 plus the number of hostile creatures within five feet of the companion they could see or hear. Okay, so at the bottom of your screen, yeah, yeah, yeah there's just gonna be that. So oh, nice, awesome. four ferocity. That's a nice four. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're also going to. Orion's gonna use. Uh, this is the start of the turn, so Ryan's going to use that four ferocity he just got to uh, target for it, is what it's called. Okay. Oh, Chosen Quarry, that's what it was. Essentially, it's kind of like Hunter's Mark as well, so he's going to apply okay. it onto the troll. All and right. then. Out, uh, creature as your prey when you're banging against the ferocity. Uh, you can spend four ferocity marker creatures with 90 feet. The creature becomes your core for one minute until so you lose this feature. Um, whenever you or your companion hit with a weapon attack, you do an extra 1d6. You or your companion. That's pretty nice. Okay. Yep. And then we're both going to... Orion's going to hold his action uh, for his short bow to take a shot at uh, whoever uh, strikes at the troll first. And then uh, Claude, I think it's going to wait as well. Uh, I guess... Yeah, he's just gonna wait for now. Okay. And I'll pass, pass it to the troll. The troll. Okay. Oh. The troll is surprised um, that there were people hiding. Uh, he knew about some of you, but he didn't know about all of you. And uh, he's gonna spend his round being surprised. However, as his initiative starts for the battle, uh, you dear, do hear the many bloops of Paragon actions. Oh boy. Let's right. go. Okay. <laughs> First combat. <laughs> All right. Um, he is going to pass to. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he'll pass to you, jerk, because you're the closest. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm just gonna have to walk out and attack him now. What do you guys think? Or do you want to wait for him? Now, My currently, for those who have range, he is a tall boy. Um, but he is yeah. going to get some partial cover right now because of the the bushes, the rocks. He's down lower than the rest of you guys, like down by the water, that kind of stuff. That's exactly okay. my question. So, yep. We're going to... And your fairy fire is based off of when I start my attack, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Whenever you go. So I guess Jert's going to realize that it's not going to come up at this point, so he's going to... Well, I mean, it, it didn't get to oh, take the oh, turn yet. Right. I mean, it was surprised, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. From his perspective, it's still down there, so he's uh -huh. going to take advantage of his uh, turn initiative and step out from the... Okay. Uh, we'll go into this part here. Uh, and he's going to use a bonus action to twirl his axe into a uh, upside-down uh, grip. 
okay. and enter his throwing stance. Okay. Uh, and I cast. <laughs> and uh, if, if once the fairy fire goes off, he's gonna throw a uh, he's gonna throw his heirloom axe at the troll. And oh, if dope. it hits, it will rebound her back to him. Okay. Uh, oh. Let's see. The creature has to make a save against fairy fire. Yeah, he's going to take a bit of the smoke and flame from Barnabas' smoke, refract it off of a piece of something on his neck, mm. grab it through the air, and then throw it towards him and have him refract with light. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, here is the dexterity save. Uh, yeah, he is going to be lit up with that fairy fire. All right. So this throw will be at advantage, and... Uh, since I'm in throwing stance, it also gets an additional. Uh, oh no, that's just the rebound. I'm gonna throw it now. Here we go. Uh, you have right, Bardic yeah. if you want. Uh, uh, four, yeah, 14? If, yeah, 14. I'll use Bardic if it doesn't. Nope. If I uh, have 14 is gonna it. hit. Hell yeah. Uh, so then I will also get the Hunter's Target D6. Oh, it's not gonna let me roll it. I'll just roll it manually. Now, those like Worlds of Warcraft hot bars at the bottom are like the perfect place to put, um, like, if you if you need like some some quick way to just say, hey, I add this much damage. Like, those are great to kind of add like really short commands. Like that. Yeah, it just yeah. took the one use of it because it counted it and rolled it that one time. Ooh, right, this right, right, right. Roll it on every attack. Ah, uh, um, okay. Oh, did you try to set up like a active effect for it? Yeah, so yeah, I'll this is going to be a real pain in the ass to get him to work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's bonus and action. And since he hits, the heirloom axe spins into its skin and rebounds into Jert's hand. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, uh, once he throws an axe or Ryan's uh, ready action, does it go off? Okay. Get advantage. Um... I'm also going to... Oh, hell yeah. Alright, yeah, that's going to hit. Plus Chosen Quarry. Alright, for a total of 11 damage. Alright, anything else? Uh, Jert. Um, no, I think that is... Let me double check that I have any reactions that I want to use on my turn. I have a lot of them. Nope, they're all based on his actions, so that's it for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is going to use a Paragon after your turn is over, and it's just going to move the rest of the way up uh, here. That's a big boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's a combination of like just climbing and leaping and crawling its way up uh, the, the side of the thing with its sharp ass claws on its uh, feet and hands. Uh, you see that its arms are very long, um, and Barna, Barnabas, uh, you realize that you are in melee range of the creature. Uh, nope. Same, same with them. Once again, answered my question before I asked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right, who do you pass to, Jert? Um, rain covered and staring up at this giant fucking creature. He's gonna pass back to um, Benlin because I think he's the other melee. Uh, that he's aware of thus far. Uh, you can pass it to me, because I'm just going to do the same thing as before, just ready actions. Oh, yeah. Go for it, yeah. So, All right, I'll yeah. pass it to you, Orion. All right. Uh, yeah, same dance. Uh, he will ready a sh uh, short bow attack, and Claude this time will go into uh, going closer. And he'll also ready an attack. Okay. Claw gets another four, uh, well, he started back there, so he got four ferocity, and then he moved four. Okay. And that's it for us. All right. Uh, Pass to, I guess, I guess ranged people to get stuff set up first, and then for melees to start going in. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, probably to... Barnabas, if you want to get out of there. 
Oh, geez, yeah. Um, All right, Barnabas, before you get a chance to go, yeah. uh, the creature is going to... Hmm. This guy has mean axe. That's bad. But this is big, big wild animal. And I think the troll is going to prioritize big wild animal uh, over little man. Uh, so, yeah, it is going to... Uh, let's see... With its paragon, it can make a shove and a bite, or two claw attacks. Hmm. Uh, alright. Let's see. It is going to try and shove claw to the ground. Alright. Uh, so, claw, here's its athletics check. Uh, ah, only a seven. You're fine. So give me a... Oh, okay. Uh, so you are not shoved to the ground, and then it's going to lunge forward and try to bite you. Alright. Uh, it only gets a 10. Uh, that does not hit Claude's armor right. class. Alright, uh, Barnabas, you're up. Uh, I am going to, um, shit, I kind of blew my water early on. I'm going to disengage, uh, before I do, I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Hex on it. Okay. And I'm going to give it disadvantage on strength checks. And then I'm going to back up back here. And that's my turn. And I'm going to pass to... Um... Because Thanlin? Or no, wait. Uh, Layla is a ranged person, too. You're a druid. I don't know what you do yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pass to Layla. Let's see what Layla okay. does. Uh, as okay. you go to pass to Layla, uh, the creature is going to activate... Uh, and it's going to attack Claude with two claw attacks. Go. All right. Uh, so there's the first attack, uh, which is nope. only an 11. And here's the second attack. Oh my god. This is going Oof. really well for us, guys. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> um, all right, so the cause is a complication. Uh, and the creature has a misfortune, so it's a <laughs> negative one to everything for this fight. Hell yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so Layla, you're up. Okay, um, Layla will kind of hop over this rock and move over to the edge here, um, and she will, uh, conjuring, uh, you know, in that nice space like the food was, the bush here, is right next to this creature, she'll just start spinning her hands in place, uh, and slowly but surely, over the next few seconds, a ball of roaring flame will appear next to the creature. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. Nice. That will cast flaming sphere. Do I have a flaming sphere? I think I do. Hold on. That's just a basic little thing. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, what color flaming sphere? Uh, orange, red. Found oh, me. Okay. Just orangey. Okay. And at the end of its turn, if it's still next to it, um, it's gonna take. I'm gonna. I guess I'll roll for damage. I'm not gonna actually go ahead and shoot it into it yet, because I don't want to pass to it. Aww. It's animated, but it's not. It doesn't have the fire set up on it. Hold on a sec. It's okay. I can always just put down a, a square if you need. It. Nah, nah, nah. I got it. Hold on. I'll be really quick. Uh, let's see. Fire. For some reason, Layla's is the only name that doesn't display on my screen. Oh, Does anyone weird. else see that? I'll have to take a look at that. Say that again? Does anyone oh, else no. see Layla's nameplate? Same. I don't see it either. Uh, I don't see it. I haven't seen it this whole time. I'm not sure if it's set up to show nameplate. I see it! <laughs> I don't see Fanlin's health bar now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I don't see that. Oh yet. yeah. What, you don't? Alright, yeah. so, so anything like that, just type it into the Discord so I can right. like, knock them out one after another. Sure! Okay, cool, cool. Noted. Thanks. All right. Uh, so here we go. Here's your flame sphere. Still not generating light. Hmm. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay. Yep. And, um, let's see. This is my action to do that. I'm not going to do anything crazy about bonus action yet. I am just going to place that down. Really. 
creature. Okay. There you go. I'll Ooh, pass over. Oh, I'll pass All over right. to Guy. Now, when you cast it, you can hit them with it as part of the casting. Yeah, as I could. I could as a bonus action, I guess. Right? I mean, roll it into them. Hmm. Um, because you can move it 60 feet. It's a bonus action. Um, yeah, th so... 30 feet is a bonus action, but yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 30. Sorry, sorry. 30 feet. So I guess we'll just roll it through them to the other side so it's still next to them. Kind okay. of makes them a little stuck. Yeah, and do... And do... Alright, here's its deck save. Oh, just terrible. What are these dice rolls? Alright. But I rolled terrible on that damage, so... <laughs> It's uh, all right. So it takes two points of fire damage. Um, it does not. Um, it doesn't like the fire for sure. Um, but you can still see the wounds that have been dealt are still closing and healing. Uh oh. Oh, we're gonna need that cold damage. All right. Uh, who do you pass to? A guy. Okay. As you prepare to pass the guy, uh, the creature is um, in frustration. Uh, gonna try swinging at Claude again. See if it can do anything about this. Here we go. Uh, one. And two. Nope. And no. Oh my goodness. Wow. What? Oh my god. Alright. Uh, guy, you're up. Before. Guy will see that and he'll say, Oh, I had low expectations and yet this thing didn't meet them. Alright. And he'll step out of the bush, walk over here, and throw his hand over and say, Maybe you just need a, I don't know, a mother's love. Here you have the duchesses. And a mummified hand will grip around its neck. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, chill Touch uh, is going to hit, and it and takes five points of necrotic damage. He is unable to regain hit points to the start of my next turn. Nice. Super good. I'll just come over here. Actually, I probably want to stay within range of Thanlin. Oh, no, it's 60 feet. We're fine. You know, Guy's going to move way over here, and he's going to say, Hey, Thanlin! I am the captain now. Impress me. And he'll bark inspiration. Oh, thank you. And he'll pass it over to Thanlin. Alright, the creature is whirling left and right. It cannot believe what is happening. Um, realizing that Claude might be an unkillable creature. Um, it is going to lash out at Jert instead. No, please. Not my tiny body. <gasps> oh, no! Right, here we go. Uh, Jert, it is going to, uh, try... Uh, nah, it's just gonna claw you. Here we go. What? It's using a natural weapon? And two. Yes, okay. using a natural weapon. Uh, first oh one hits. Oh my god. Alright. Uh, so the first oh one hits god. for ten slashing damage. You need to make a dexterity save. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Only if it hits with both. So it didn't hit with both, okay. so it doesn't sunder any of your stuff. 10 damage. Yep. Okay, I'm going to use my reaction Okay. Uh, to burn one of my exertions to use uh, speed over strength. Okay. Uh, which, he just hit me with a, a large creature with a natural attack. I get to make an attack against him. Alright, go for it. Oh, I just realized, uh, guy, chill touch, that's an attack roll, right? I was at advantage, yep. Uh, then I guess Orion and Claude's uh, reactions would go off too, because that was the next attack against a troll. Oh, oh okay, go for it. All these attacks at once, all in advantage. Yes! <laughs> Take the fairy fire, use the fairy fire. Uh, that's gonna be a 24 to hit for me. Okay, um, 24 definitely hits, 7 does not. And then he takes an additional 6 from the hunter's target. Oh shit, okay. Hell yeah, max damage. All right, um, eight from the no, eighteen from the shortbow is gonna hit. All right, he takes a total of nine from shortbow and chosen quarry. All right, very nice, very nice. Um, I also can't get rid of uh, statuses on my character, so that may be another thing. Um, you have to right click to get rid of them. Um, no. not, not left click. So if you have, like, multiple stacked up, there you go. Ah, I see now. Thanks. Okay. Um, shit. Uh, who is up next? Uh, Guy. Either... Alright, Thanlin. Before Thanlin can go. 
creature's gonna attack again. Um, Jert, I guess it will, uh, it actually hit you, so it will keep trying. Oh, God. Uh, here we go. Here is a claw and a claw. Uh, the second one hits. Okay, so five more damage. Let me take my health down real quick. I am bloodied. All right. Uh, Thanlin, you're up. Thanlin's gonna go by the side of the creature right there. Is this considered flanking? Uh, it is. All right. And then he's going to... Hmm. No, he can't do that yet. He's just going to attack with his longsword. Okay. Advantage with a plus two from the flank. Oh yeah, that's gonna hit uh, for uh, 20 for eight. And as a bonus action... Actually, no. He'll stay right where he is. Okay. And he'll pass to the troll. Oof. Alright. As you pass to the troll, um, it takes a deep breath and um, kind of looks confused. Um, it looks down at the fire. It looks at itself. It looks up at the rain. Um, and then it feels around to its own neck and feels like kind of the lingering necrotic damage there. Uh... And you can see that the creature is uh, maybe a little worried. All right, um, it has its full action economy, which hey, much is just a little, he's a little low level guy. He's trying his best. Um, let's see, eh, focus fire, focus fire. He's gonna keep his attention on jerks. Oh god. All right, so here's two more swings for you, jerk. My body. Oh yeah, that hits. Oh my god. That one definitely misses the Hey, no, right. that one. Here we go. <laughs> oh man. This is, uh, this is not his day. This is not, not his day. Yeah, Jert's not looking too good, though. He's uh, he's standing, but his knees are starting to falter. There we go. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll stack it in case he ever gets a fortune token. It ain't gonna fucking matter. Alright. Uh... And he will stand his ground, I think. Um, he is... Hmm. The river's right there, though. Alright, he's gonna take one step back, uh, provoking from Claude, but not from uh, Jert or Thin. Can Claude substitute an attack for a grapple? Uh, yeah, I allow that in my games. Alright, then he will try to... Because your Beastmaster picture. pet does get rea its own reaction economy too, right? Yep. Okay. Alright. Uh, he's got to make this at disadvantage because of the hex. Oof. Alright. Unfortunately, you did a 12 and it got a 12 with disadvantage. Uh, yep. So that's no extra change. minus one, I think. It's, it's factored in. Oh, okay. Yeah. At least it should be, because no uh, misfortune. He has no, two misfortune tokens, doesn't he? Well, they don't, they don't stack, but... Oh! Um, oh goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. But looking at it... Um, it's it's there, it's a minus yeah, one. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's no change in status as he moves away. Alright, um, he will pass to... Uh, Barnabas. Real quick, at the end of his turn, he's still near the fire, so he can make another big deck save. Oh it's shit! Nine right. fire damage. Nice. Right. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, it okay. takes. Okay. All right, Barnabas, to you. Okay. I see Jerk getting wailed on over there. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I, I, I'm gonna run up behind him. I'm pretty sure I can get here. Yeah, I can. So I'm gonna. Run back in, budget behind Jert, and be like, "Don't worry, I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna heal you just yet. Sorry." I'm yeah, he's holding up the giant arm mm. of this troll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I'm gonna like peer around him, and from the, uh, right now, I believe I'm 15 feet away, so I should be out of his attack range. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna fire. I pull out my flintlock pistol and I fire an eldritch blast from it. Oh, that's all right. Dope. Uh, 23 definitely hits. 
And that's going to also get uh, Genie's Wrath damage for two fire and Hex damage for another uh, four fire damage. Nice. Oh, no, no, that's necrotic. Two, it's only two fire damage, but it's four necrotic and eight force. Got it. All right. Uh, strong oh, turn. Gunshot. Strong turn. Um, I don't think I have a bonus action, so... Right. Would you like to pass to? I will pass to Guy. Guy oh, wait, ooh, wait. To... That, he has a, a condition that it's going to the... The healing will stop at the end of his turn, right? Well, at the start of my guy, turn. Guy can start just re try to reapply it, yeah. Because Should... the troll won't heal until the beginning of its real turn. Okay. Yeah. I looked at Guy. Does Guy look receptive and wanting? Yeah, yeah, he can do whatever. Yeah, he's ready to buff yeah. people. All right, go for it. Uh, right. Yeah. As you go to pass the guy, uh, it's going to use its Paragon to... Uh, I think it's going to have to disengage. I mean, it's, it's got innate intelligence, but even it can see the writing on the wall here. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, this is fucking crazy. So um, you sense um, Jerk, Claude, and Thanlin, uh, you're up close to the creature, that it is getting ready to cut and run. So it is basically bunching up its muscles. It keeps looking over its shoulder at the river. Um, how current Giffy Glyph Paragons work is uh, they can only take one dash action per round um, because there were assholes that were abusing that. Um, and then they can, um, you, you bank your movement. So he used five movement on his turn so he would still have some movement left. And then if he took a dash action with his next Paragon, he would get to add the speed he hadn't spent to the, to the thing so he can he can definitely kind of haul butt and get out of here um uh, and it looks like that's what he's thinking about doing but guy you're up uh you guys would obviously be able to communicate to the others like it looks like it's getting ready to cut and run mm -hmm. oh yes i'll go stop him <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you want to pass to me, I'll try to have Claw well, grab him again. He's about to run on the end of my turn here. Oh, yeah, I, that's right. Damn. Um, so, what I'm going to do... Mm. I have an idea. I should clarify, okay. he won't get to use all the speed in one go, but he has that speed available, if that makes sense. So, yeah. he could he could move up to his full speed with a, with a Paragon Dash, and then take another Paragon Dash if he still had speed left over from his turn, which he does. Normally they can't, you know, just keep, da you know, dashing over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just want to ask, if I made him run away from me right here, uh -huh. he would have to go this way, right? Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, uh, he'd probably evil genie you and head this way, uh, because that's still away from you. Um, right. But it wouldn't be straight into the water. So, right now, um, yeah, I mean that that could kind of move him. Like, but he's disengaged, so nobody. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. You in... have you scared the shit out of the stroll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first off, I'm gonna need to keep that no regen up. Yeah, yeah. So I'll reply that. Okay. There you uh, go. And it works. Yeah. Uh, he is. Yeah, you can see he's dried out. His, like from the the necrotic damage, his like skin's all dried out and like flaking. Like there's burn marks all over his body. Um, the cuts that he's received from all these attacks have not healed. Uh, this dude is fucked up. And then, um, man, you both already have Bardic, don't you? Uh, uh I do, yeah. Okay, a Bardic uh, Claude in order to help him with his grapple check if he gets one. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna pass immediately over to uh, the Claude Orion show. All right. Uh, yes, I will. All right, the creature is definitely going to turn and kind of leap slash slide down into the water. This is as far as it could go this turn. Um, so that's that's where he's at. He, like, slides down the rocks to try to get into the water. So you guys can still try to catch him. Is he submerged? He's not submerged yet. Uh, all right. Uh, so you passed me, right? Yep, it's Orion and Claude. And Bardic Claude. Alright, Claude has 40 feet of movement, so he'll go after the troll and kind of slide down after him and try okay, to Okay, height, height. Alright. 
Oh, you know what? Um, I need to do um, acrobatics for the troll because he went full speed down the hill. So. It's fully eat shit with the rock side. <laughs> yeah, I mean the way his rolls are going. Yo! Yeah. Oh my oh, god! Nice. He's full prone as well. Uh, Plot, if you're moving full speed, I'll need an acrobatics from you as well, as you kind of uh, leap down uh, the side of the cliff. Or not the cliff, but the ledge. Well, if he sees him just eat shit, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he needs to go full speed. Okay. Um, he'll be a little bit more... Well, Boss will that cut, will that cut down edge. on speed if I... Uh, it'll just make it like half speed. Yeah, you know what? You you could just jump onto him at this point. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, right. he'll, he'll pounce onto him. Uh, oh, he does have yeah. a pounce ability, but he's not going to use that. Uh, okay. And then he's gonna make a grapple check. All right. Here is his hexed athletics check with uh, with a misfortune token to boot. Yeah, hold on. Uh, Bardic uh, D six, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Low level Bardic. Come on. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Go Claude, Claude leaps onto him, grabs a hold of him, uh, and puts all his weight back against the uh, the hillside, uh, the rocky hillside, to keep him from getting away. Hell yeah. Actually, oh, hold on, I didn't roll. I need to keep remembering the roll for uh, Ferocity. And remember, e range decks still are straight because of Fairy Fire. Okay, that's an extra two. Um, on the Ryan's turn, he's going to... Shit. Remember, Beastmaster, you're controlling two characters, so you gotta be, you know... Yeah, I know it's the first, it the first combat, but... Uh, if in doubt, um, when you're playing like uh, a pet caster, definitely ready actions to um, keep combat moving. Uh, I think he'll just ready his uh, short bow again. Okay. Uh, who do you pass to? Uh, I guess pass to Layla to get her right. a little bit closer. As you pass um, to Layla, uh, from the ground, the creature's just going to flail wildly at Claude. So these are two at disadvantage. Oh my god, this oh, poor no. troll, holy shit. <laughs> I feel right. so bad. <laughs> this is, why, this this is why you do your rolls out in the open. If you uh, were rolling behind a screen, tell me you wouldn't have trouble resisting the urge to be like, uh, actually, uh, let's see. <laughs> critically disposed expenses, so your target may reroll all ones and twos on damage against the next little attack against you. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, yeah. so, Layla, you're up. Sure. Uh, real quick question. When it did its Paragon stuff, um, would that have caused uh, these guys to be able to do a uh, reaction thing attacks? If you mean? It down the hill. Uh, it, it, it used a disengage. Um, oh, okay. Disengage. Oh, sorry. I thought it, it did yeah. it like a and dash. It, nope, I'm sorry. No, it used two Paragons for that. Yep. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Alright. So I'm going to move up just a little bit on the edge of the rocks. I'm going to have this flaming spear come down here to the edge, skirting on the water, probably sizzling that water real hard, and oh, just yeah. kind of knock, you know, knock it into that, you know, I mean, as far oh, as it shit. can go is there. All but right. this is deck save. Uh, let me roll that real quick. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, don't roll Wilkie's thing. That's my bonus action. All right, it takes five more damage. And then uh, I go... Sorry, Claude, uh, as this is the, uh, you know, paired for the troll fight, I will throw, try to throw an ice knife into it. Okay. Which will explode out and hit both Claude and him, but... Uh, 23 is definitely gonna hit. Uh, and it's a deck save for the second part. Alright, so it takes three, and then it looks like Claude's dealing with six on a deck save. Yeah, uh, and it also takes this uh, the deck save. Okay, cool. All right, so it takes half damage from the secondary effects. Looks like yeah. 
that Nyx with uh, the cold. No, it's, it's nothing with the explosion. My bad. Um, uh, nothing. Target each creature. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Claude does take the six cold damage. Okay. Yeah. Up. Oh, sorry. Anything else from Layla? Uh, we'll just. Oh, I guess uh, I'll try to pass to Dirt, but. Uh, yeah, basically, it's just going to act after everybody's turn. Uh, oh, that's an attack roll. Uh, that's my ready action for Ryan. Okay, okay, okay. But this is at disadvantage because he's prone, right? Straight but roll. But it's great because of the ah. thing. He does have some cover, but you did move up, so it's only a plus two. But his armor cost is super low, uh, so a seven does hit. So he takes 12 total. Uh, Layla, you passed a jerk, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, on the ground, it's just going to flail wildly at the lion. Uh, I'm so uh, happy we name ourselves after him. It was a 14 <laughs> and 14 a 17. Hit. 17 would hit. Holy shit, Claude finally got touched. <laughs> Alright, uh, you're up, jerk. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jared's going to uh, grip his axe tightly. And um, as a bonus question. action. Oh. Huh? We had a healing potion from um, the woman uh, from the shop, you, right? You, you gave it back in exchange for Alchemist uh, Toolkit. Oh, that's right. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Okay. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Going to spend a. Uh... Well, first he did not move. Well, it's prone. He's not going to make a attack. He's going to walk up to it. Yeah. So he's going to ignore a difficult terrain, and slide like combat slide down this uh, bloody hillside, okay. and make a, a long jump, leaping attack at this thing and just jump on it. Okay. Sure. Uh, using his bonus action to use uh, Hunter's Mark. All right. We'll put that up here as well. All right. Anyway, here's the attack roll, and it should be at advantage. Uh, that's a natural 20. Ooh, very nice. nice. Okay. So that's so going to maximize of... all your extra dice as well. Yeah. So I'm going to roll the uh, 2d6 for Hunter's target first. Uh, you don't have to do any of that because oh. uh, just the critical hit damage is going to be enough to kill him. How does he die? Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, I was also going to spend all of his exertion points, so the extra dice damage would have been this. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Jesus. That's adding his bonus and his reaction to use... Uh, his hunter's mark as well as the uh, trained accuracy reaction. So advanced 5e gave a rager the ability at third level to do 66 extra damage. I'm a crit, yeah. It's 3d6 if I spend uh -huh. uh, all of my wisdom tokens with my uh, trained accuracy and crit doubles. Wow. It. Okay. Yep. Um, keep in mind that we're using max damage on crits, so it would have been 3d6 oh, plus God. 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so how does he die? Uh, Jert leaps off, and as Claude is pinning this thing down to the rock side, uh, he cleaves into it with his axe, splitting its face open. Alright. Uh, with a resounding crunch, uh, you, uh, cleave into its face and into its brain. Uh, the necrotic damage from the chill touch, the cold damage, and the fire damage, its body shudders, uh, and dies. That is that. That was insane. Hell yeah. Woo. That Claus line is still. That line is MVP straight up. Dude, yeah. What the fuck? Claude is so good. I'm so happy we named ourselves after him. Hell yeah. If it was just one point under, I still had the reaction to add two plus two to his AC, so I could have blocked that hit, but eh. Um, well done, everyone. See, River Troll's nothing for the Claws. All right, now we gotta get this thing back to Jarrett. Uh, Claw will bite onto this creature and try and drag it up to the to the rest of them. Oh, Be yeah. mindful, we also need to give the head to um, Kellen. 
That's right. So we All right, lose the creature, the creature weighs about 1,200 pounds. Oh my god. <laughs> We're I just have... taking that. No. I mean, I have a just... block and tackle. I could get it out of the water. Okay. We could tie tie ropes well, to it. Use a block we... and tackle, which allows us to carry four times our weight or lift four times our weight. If Jordan enough time, he can chop it up into small enough pieces. Yeah. We're not in any rush. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Someone you guys get a harvesting kit. We could. You guys use a rope and such. You pull it up onto flatter, more even ground, and then you start butchering it up. Yeah. Could I try to collect some blood? Uh, there was some talk about. Oh, uh, there's being... quite a, there's quite a bit of blood. Yeah, you could definitely gather some. Cool. Uh, I had the same blood. idea. I would like to try to harvest this thing with a uh, survival chip. All right. But, um... Uh, I can uh, give him a vantage on that. Harvesting a harvesting kit from her. Uh, Orion purchased one on loan. Yeah, I mean, uh, are you trained in it? Nope. <laughs> I can use it. I am. Uh, yeah, he was. He was. Uh, his plan was to kind of learn it over time, but yeah, he'll study under you as you're kind of doing that. Yeah, I'll give it back to you. We'll just use it for this one one go. Oh, yeah, nature team engaged. All right, Le Le he's, guy will see Layla, actually like using it, and he will copy your proficiency and help you. Oh my God, it's so good. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Less guidance. Do you lose the spell you copied though? No. Oh God, so skills and spells oh, are separate. Geez. That's so good. What is this subclass? All right. Uh, let's see. Give me that. Um, uh, give me a knowledge nature. Um, so you can identify what is worth harvesting from the creature. And then give me a survival check. All right. Um, you know that the troll's flesh. Um, Dude. let's see. Yeah. Uh, that as well. And it is my studied adversary as well. I have advantage on my chances. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh. So the trolls meat, if properly treated, the way the way you guys killed it, it's it's probably probably not going to be overly effective. Actually, um, hmm, I'm going to say since it died under the effects of a chill touch, this probably would not be um, worth mentioning. But uh, some cultures, uh, in order to solve food issues, um, Layla, they uh, they will kill a troll uh and then um keep the meat and the meat will sort of regenerate and become like a sustainable like food source um but the issue is uh prolonged um eating of troll flesh will start to make you resemble a troll um so there are there are rural communities um in the mountains uh, and forest that um, used to be like human beings or, or other creatures uh, and they are essentially like troll kin uh, from this practice of eating the flesh of trolls uh, and they sort of have like uh, uh, a place where they store that troll meat and they come and harvest off of it and everybody eats it's very very uh, it's, it's, it's pretty gross yeah, um, I don't know the, that she carved <laughs> out the meat <laughs> Uh, the blood <laughs> is a key ingredient in making healing potions and um, can reduce the cost of making a healing potion from 50 uh, down to 20. Um, this particular troll, uh, with your survival check, uh, you were able to harvest five vials of the, the best blood, essentially. It's a little metagamey, but it, you know, it's basically it goes kind of video gamey. The harvesting um, raw, I mean, you don't even really do any harvesting. So, uh, so you get five vials of that blood. Uh, that blood is essentially, uh, if you spend the time, uh, a twenty GP uh, healing potion, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and then you can also harvest the creature's heart. Um, yeah, uh, the troll's heart. Hmm, let's see. Ooh. Uh, the Troll's Art is a primary ingredient um, for crafting magical amulets related to health and regeneration. 
Um, the in and of itself, as a sort of collectible oddity, it is worth 83 gold, uh, the Crucius Heart. Um, but if you could find someone or learn how, you could uh, use the Troll's Heart to um, as a primary ingredient to craft uh, a pretty powerful item. So something in the lines of like uh, Amulet of Health that gives you like a 19 Constitution, like that that kind of shit. Right, and yeah, then let's see what else this thing have. Um, okay, uh, you can harvest the creature's toes. Um, people believe the toes of giants uh, give you strength and virility um, if you if you brew them into um, uh, your drink, essentially, or if you um, you basically put it in your drink and then you drink your drink um, with a giant's toe um, or you know, you put the, sorry, you put it into, like, a barrel of ale, and you let it ferment in there and, like, affect the ale. Um, people think that it makes you stronger and make your pee-pee hard. So, <laughs> um, give me a D10, uh, Jert, and that will determine how many pristine uh, giant toes were on this creature. You know, we could give that to the brewer after we're done. All right, know. so there, there well, were five. Get rid of all of them. Uh, all of you are educated enough to know that the the giant toes do not do anything uh, medicinal at all. Uh, <laughs> but they can they can be sold for four gold pieces each because people do believe that they uh, have these properties. Uh, so you have four, or sorry, five uh, giant toes that are worth four each. Um, and then let's see, the claws, um, while not magical, they could be fashioned into kind of dope-looking short swords because it has these long uh, kind of black claws. Uh, so give me a d4 to see how many pristine troll claws you could find. All right, so you get two uh, pristine troll claws. They could be fashioned into short swords or sold for uh, ten gold pieces. Uh, and then, of course, you got the vials of blood. Um, now, you do know also, uh, Layla and Jert, that you can just drink the blood raw... Um, and it will give you, instead of, instead of using it to make a healing potion, you can, uh, drink the blood raw, and it will give you 1d4 hit points at the end of each of your turns for a full minute. Which is, a lot of people, if you do the math there, that's way better than a healing potion. Way better than a healing potion. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's what you, ha uh, harvest off of this troll. Okay, uh, I wrote all that down real quick. Let's put that in the chat. Sweet. There, it's just in the general. There you go. Phelan's trying to walk over. Oh, Phelan's trying to walk over the guy, put a hand on his shoulder, and say, Good job. Hmm. Good job to you, too. I mean, you all swung with the might of the uh, Restalorian Empire and taking out the giants. It was, uh, well done. Well done, all of you. I mean, OOC. Holy shit, guys. I mean, <laughs> that thing was bringing 12 attacks per round uh, that were plus 5 uh, to hit. Uh, 1d6 plus 4 damage. Uh, if two of them hit, it would start destroying your equipment. Um, the bite was, like, ongoing poison. You guys did amazing. Admittedly, admittedly, Avandra, the goddess of luck, uh, was a hundred percent, like, yeah. behind this bush over here, but, like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, I was gonna say, the <laughs> Thank you, are in shit. Like, that could, gone, that could have gone, that could have gone so badly. Um, exactly, I thought the oh same my thing. God. The rolls are very much in our favor. Yeah. The rolls were in your favor, but you also played really smart, and you didn't rush into it, and you did research, you didn't fight it in a boat, you didn't try to find it in its lair. Um, you know, like, you, you did a lot of really smart things here, so... The boat was a trap. This is good, because this fight is the litmus test for me, for what you guys, as a group, should be able to handle. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we short rest while we're here, Harvest? Yeah, but, yeah, just keep sure. in mind, you know, really bad rolls in here. You're just gonna take a seat after they, like... He's just gonna wipe the sweat in the rain after harvesting oh. this thing. Pop his uh, potion, his uh, healing salve he made earlier, and uh, spend some hit dice to recover. Uh, if you spend one hit dice and you see guy would see you resting, 
he'll come over to you and like the Hulk handing a taco to Ant Man, it has <laughs> the last bit of the rancid food that's not rotten, and he'll uh. smile at you and hum something as he walks away. You'll get song. Right. Dress, I'll be honest, I thought you were gonna steal his hit dice. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my hit dice now. Uh, <laughs> and I get to add my con to that, which is two, so I get 11 hit points. There you go. <sighs> Alright, so uh, well I done, think uh, other than the maybe keeping the blood, we give the rest to uh, the lady in question. Well, yeah. the head goes to Kellen, the right, rest. Right, right. Certainly. Yeah. If maybe, not refined, maybe, maybe the, keep blood vials, though. Oh, yeah, Kellen, Kellen gonna hang that shit on the wall, man. Gonna hang that shit on the wall. Are we, are we keeping the blood vials, though? It's a regeneration potion. It sounds amazing. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We sure. are keeping those blood vials. The rest is going to Jared. I think she'll be more than happy with the rest of the body. Now, I mean, much the heart. Here's, here's the thing. It's not gonna ha It's not gonna happen to you guys because I can't imagine you get in the habit of killing this many trolls and drinking their blood. But similar to eating the meat, part of why the there trolls' is. blood is not a popular thing to to you know um, keep as a potion um, versus an actual healing potion is one. It's it's literally trolls' blood, so it tastes absolutely rancid. Um, and the more you drink of it, the more troll-ish uh, you would become over time. Now, obviously, once or twice, hey, it's whatever. Um, but if you got into the steady habit mm -hmm. of using it, it would prevent. But that is the main reason why um, when you go to buy potions, you would see refined healing potion versus uh, troll blood. You know, they have ha there's half orcs, half trolls. You know, I'm not seeing the... <laughs> is there anyone that would be just super saying. opposed to having one since we have five that would be like absolutely like would not partake in it I don't love Ever. the idea it seems kind of crude um, also does this have a shelf life so normally um, if a troll dies by normal means it would be fine but I'm I'm, pro I'm gonna probably say that due to the fact that it died while under the effects of the chill touch spell that it can't regain any health um, its body is kind of just shut down, like, uh, at that point. Um, you could, with the alchemy kit, you could definitely preserve the blood. You know what I'm saying? You put it in a bottle, you hermetically seal it, um, and then you just crack it when you're ready to drink it. Um, Perfect. but yeah, shel shelf wise, uh, shelf life wise, um, yeah, you would need something like gentle repose or something like that to kind of keep it going. Uh, which is maybe another reason why you don't see troll's blood as a common mm -hmm. item. I mean, I'm cool with doing whatever with it. No, uh -huh. this is Layla fine. wouldn't really have, like, a... She obviously doesn't have, like, any sort of, like, I wouldn't drink this. Yeah. It's I not too hard to keep one. We can keep one, yeah, just in case. One. I can hold on to one. I need it for proof anyways. Yeah. I won't partake, but I encourage you guys to do it. Sounds like it works great, but uh, I smell yeah, that. Like, no, 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 no evil genie stuff here. You, There's no... Nothing horrible is going to happen to you if, you if you drink, like, one or two Trolls' Bloods. Like, nothing horrible is going to happen to you. Like, that's my evil genie guarantee. It's not like, hey, 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 there's a secret amount of Trolls' Blood. If they drink, they're ter the character's ruined. Like, oh. yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying, well, to, I'm just trying to explain to you that. why they would prefer to make it into a healing mm -hmm. potion. I will take one as well. All right. Yeah, sounds like we got a couple trips to make then. Alright, so you're going to take one guy, I'll add it to your sheets. Yeah, I'll take one as well. All right. And uh, yeah, while we I, we rest, I'll preserve it for them. It's also, I think Layla feels like, I don't know, using the thing you killed makes it, I don't know, yeah, it's more justifiable to her. Yeah. Like, butcher the things you kill and use them, so. Yeah, so you know, this is the circle of life. <laughs> It, nature is savage, yo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's an animal eat animal world out there. She is definitely not a not a a, a, a vegan vegetarian druid. <laughs> you know. Oh, since and, these, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking, since we've killed it and we are bringing it back in town, we can show proof of our deeds to the captain, and you know. Oh, so then why would you want to show the captain? Right? That's Guy. That's Guy right there. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm giving a troll's blood to Guy. I'm giving a troll's blood to Layla. Yes. Right? Okay. Who's else getting a troll's blood? 
I'm good. Someone else can take it. All right. So then there'll be Unless three more trolls blood that you could sell. Yeah, okay. let's sell it. So who wants to be the party treasurer? Who wants to carry shit? You guys gonna put little saddlebags on Claude and have Claude carry everything? I love the I mean, good. say. It Claude sounds like a good up. idea, but mechanically, if he does die, yeah, he, he's a very heavy fucking section. lion. Um, yeah. so, yeah. So, there you go. I will say I have an interdimensional space I can put things in, but oh, it's go. kind of like has business hours. It can only be accessed once a day. So it's, you know, not ideal. Yeah, Layla, I'm just going to give trolls. you the rest of the trolls, blood. There we go. When are All you right. getting that uh, artificial infusion? There we go. That's coming. That's coming. You'll have to wait. <laughs> Making a bag of holding there. All right. So, um... I guess surrounded by uh, allies, um, the troll chopped up and portioned out. Um, did you guys bring any like sacks or tarps or anything to put the pieces in, or are you guys just fucking arm loads of dead troll through uh, the streets? Jerd is willing to tear up his tent and bedroll and buy new ones when we get back in town. Oh, nice. Okay, all right. So smart move. So you make the tent and bedroll into like a little. Um, uh, gurney almost throw the body uh, parts on there and then uh, with a great effort uh, the seven of you haul uh, roughly 1200 pounds of dead troll through the streets um, the rain and the dark um, where do you head and then once we establish that we will continue next week uh, square of town where the council meets oh exactly right. Oh, Perfect. damn. All right. And you guys are just going to camp out on the open green tonight with it and then show them in the morning? I mean, we can sounds viable. Yeah, you could just go to Jared's for the night. That's true. Get, give no, her the really harvesting really. bits, then we take its head to prove to the council, and then its head to Kellen to get our payment. Yeah. They can have an emergency meeting, can't they? <laughs> that sounds yeah. pretty good to me. Okay. So, wait, we're, where, where are we going? Jared's, I think. Jared's okay. All right, so we'll end with you guys going to Jared's house after hours with this dead troll, and covered in we'll, blood. Yep, yep. We'll pick up next week. All right. Excellent. Fuck yeah, guys! Oh Woo. my god, I'm always nervous when the campaign starts when I'm making monsters because you have to build monsters around the parties. Um, not just their builds, but also their competency. Uh, so with this monster, I was like, well, I'm going like, to keep an eye on them. And then I'm going to keep an eye on their abilities. I'm going to you know, look over their character sheets and all that. And if, it, if they're terrible, we'll just make him an elite. And he only has one paragon. Uh, but if they're, if they're capable, we'll go ahead and give them three paragons. And if, they, uh, if I think that they can handle it, I'll give them the full paragon economy. And so I gave them the full paragon economy. And I was like, I really hope I'm making the right choice. And fortunately, luck was on our side. And also incredible tactics and smart spell use and teamwork. It was so good. Um, so really well done, guys. Oh, all yeah, right. Yeah, it was Thanks, Crash. This is fun. Yeah. Yeah, this is fun, man. <laughs> Got all right. First combat down. And you have plenty more to do to help the people of Drone's Ferry. So um, next week we will figure out um, these turn-ins, and then um, you guys can get started on some other heroics. Rumblings. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Right. That's the one. <laughs> Rat piss and rum gum, uh, gremlins. So, I, uh, well, I got the name for the a... next session at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend. Um, we, we still haven't put the VODs up yet. Um, I haven't, I was just at the craziest week because I'm on vacation now for my day job. So, you know, that week leading up to vacation, they just slam you with like everything. Um, so, um, I'm going to divide it into a session zero and a session one and then re-upload it, I think. Oh, uh, to uh, YouTube. do you want me to give you the, well, we can discuss off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking that'd probably be better since we've, you know, it, we kind of took, I took our, uh, took my time getting it up uh, onto YouTube and ready to go. So rather than just throw it up as is, I can just kind of take it down and put it in two parts. Um, so that'll come up. There'll probably be three Red Hand updates this week on YouTube's, and then we'll continue next Saturday um, with the third session. All right. Um, 
if you guys need me for anything, if you had anything on your character sheet that was not working, or you uh, couldn't see names, or you couldn't see hit points, let me know so I can go kind of adjust those things accordingly. Um, if you have spells that summon cool shit like uh, Flaming Sphere and stuff like that, um, and you think of it, it's no pressure, but if you think of it, throw that into chat in Discord and tag me in it so I can know to kind of make you some uh, summonable actors and stuff like that so that you can do it. Like, for example, now that you have access to that Flaming Sphere, you could open up the companions part of your character sheet, uh, and then you could drag that over, and then you can set it so that your character can summon it, um, and then there'll be like a burst of flame, and then that fiery orb will appear. Well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so there's some cool shit you could do with Foundry, so. Um, Alright, sweet. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll see you guys around the Discord. Awesome. All right. Thanks for running. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good week, everyone. Take care, Crash. Yep. Peace out.